What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. There's herbs on me fingers. <laughs> the Time. herb. Rosemary. Got some herb. Smoked paprika. Yeah, you could, fresh just, garlic. Just because you're doing that voice doesn't make it sound less ponzi. Fucking time, lad. Smoked paprika. Oh God, what's ponzi about being a fucking boss chef? Would you call Gordon Ramsay a ponce to his face? He, he is a ponce, though, isn't he? Yeah. He is a bit of a ponce. <laughs> Bad example. <laughs> what's a ponce? I don't know. It's I just... thought ponce was just a homophobic slur. No, ponce is no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't when we were kids, was it? It was a homophobic slur. I don't think I ever called anyone a ponce in school. <laughs> I have all the words in my arsenal. I love it when Adam says something and goes, right, I'm going to die on this hill. No, I remember being involved in a homophobic attack where the word ponce was used. No, I just used to call gay people ponces. No, school. there was other words to go with. Yeah, there was. Name them. No. <laughs> Short episode this week. See you later. <laughs> Sign up to Patreon where we'll do all the slurs. <laughs> Borderline true. Yeah, but I, I, I've, I have you. Uh, look, my girlfriend's a fantastic cook. You got a girlfriend? I've been keeping a secret. Oh, <laughs> thank you for a big reveal. Got something to tell you, lads. I can smell something on my fingers. <laughs> I've got a new girlfriend. Guess what? Fanny. Bummo. No, okay. We're gonna, I was going to draw the joke out a little bit and include the uh, the herbs, but we've gone straight to Fanny and Bumhole. That was what I was, you know. Okay. KY Jelly and yesterday's curry. Ooh. Oh. KY Jelly is such a go-to for you in terms of sex aid, and I've never known anyone of under the age of 80 to use it. Uh, under the age. Hey, yeah, can I... Age of 80. Can I... <laughs> Can I, po- point of order, I don't think he's used KY Jelly on the pod too much. Is this in your no, he said KY private jelly. friendship? Yeah, yeah, I mean, just in general. I think it's just because I found my mum's KY yeah. Jelly once. Because she was finger blanging in the air. Uh, she was fingering herself in the bath. What? I went with blast and I'm banging there, blanging. <laughs> you can't say words wrong on this podcast, Carl. No. Nope. We know Finley this. Finley is editing with headphones and I went, anyway, that was wrong. Ah, <laughs> you said finger blanging instead of banging. So Etta did that to me reading the other day. We did bedtime, got the little storybooks out. Whoa, whoa, said, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, when you watch this episode back or listen to it, right. you're going to realise that you went from fingering in the bath to your daughter far too quickly there. I oh, know. See, what you said happened? finger blanging, blanging, blanging. Etta did that to me in the, the other day. Yeah. That's what you've just done. The story was about me saying a word wrong, not about my daughter finger blanging me. So if anyone was like, where's he going with this? <laughs> And now I can't do it because everyone's like, wow, oh, this is about you getting finger blank by a four-year-old. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a great moment when she was like, dad, you said a word wrong. And it had the vibe of the podcast. She was even sat on that side of me. She was like, <laughs> why did you say that? I was like, oh my God, I've got Smell a fucking little mini Adam row. Smell my fingers? No, because I know you've been cooking, but you might be lying and you might have been finger blanking and I'm not into it. <laughs> Smell I'm not it. sniffing your fingers. I'm not sniffing anyone's fingers. <laughs> it's I'd, Honestly, I'd rather sniff your pits than your fucking fingers. No, I d- but I don't, I'm not going to. I just say, say if I was, if it was a would you rather. It smells lovely. It smells like pork that's about to be cooked. Right. Well, I don't eat pork. You don't eat pork? Devout Muslim now. Yeah. <laughs> Since I got finger blanked by my four-year-old daughter, I've just changed my whole belief system. Fish fingers. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, what have you been cooking so because uh, enough of the silly let's talk food 
Right. I, I'm not a great cook, but I make a fucking great butty. Right? Mm. A really good Cuban sandwich. Oh, mate, I'm so hungry. Go on. So uh, I'm slow cooking some pork. Mama I've like put, that. Uh, oh, no, slow cook it on. Like pork. I put it on high. Uh, it's got a bit of water in, a bit of paprika, fresh garlic, fresh chilli. He does it, doesn't he? he go, don't worry, I'm going to go dead fucking scouts. Turn it on, at the lecky. Rosemary, thyme. Right. Salt, pepper. and I'm like, Oh, I squeeze a lemon, and then the lemon that I've squeezed, I've chopped up the zest and put that in as well. Wow. That's going to be cooking for six hours. Get home, put that on some bread with some cheese, mustard, a bit of roast ham, uh, as well as the pork, and a pickle. And then you toast it by putting it in a pan with butter in, oh. and put the butter on the outside. Oh, that is such an improvement in our household. The old, if you're going to make a toasty or a sandwich, instead of trying to grill it and toast, because I like a little bit of toast on my bacon butty or on a cheese toasty. I'd, you know when you put the toast in? You like toast on your bacon butty? No. You know... Bread, toast, bacon, toast, whatever. Quality. Uh, you know... <laughs> such a fucking <laughs> nonce. <laughs> You know when you're making a bacon butty, the temptation is to stick the to to the bread in, the toaster, and then toast it, and then try and put bacon. But it's all fucking, it's overdone. I like taking the, basically, the bacon butty or the cheese toasty, and then doing that fucking pan-fried thing. Oh, really? Mwah, beautiful. Couldn't agree more. You have to get good bread, though. You can't do that with Warburton's. It's just right. not. Do you do it with Warburton's? I just do it with whatever... I'm doing it with really. Oh, I get a tag. I'm I'm using a tiger loaf. It hasn't even been cut yet. I'm going to cut it myself. My God. Yeah. Have you spent about twenty six quid on this sandwich? It sounds like it sounds uh, like a expensive the pork sandwich. Was like a fiver. Two packs of ham, like a quid each. So that's seven. Bread was one pound fifteen. So that's eight pound fifteen. Cheese was three quid. So that's eleven quid fifteen. Uh, mustard I've already got. Pickles I've already got. So they're negligible. So you're looking at. <laughs> You're looking How at, seriously you said that? The pickles are negligible. <laughs> don't even talk to me about pickle spends. I don't do it. I get to the start of the fiscal year. I do my tax return, and then I stock buy pickles. I actually save money. I'm always a, every fucking April. Oh, it's Adam Rowe for fucking pickles. <laughs> You're looking at eleven. Get him a pallet. Go on, sorry. You're looking at eleven quid, but that's going to do at least four people's tea. You can come to mine tomorrow tonight if you want a butty after the pod. Nice. Carl can come and get Does one. Does sound really good. I'll have a butty. Mm. Yeah. You're having a barbecue as well. Is what's going on? Well, it's I all... fucked up. I've got a gig on Sunday, this Sunday in Manchester with you, and I I, I forgot. So I've, I've arranged the barbecue at the minute. My dad and my little brother are in my house, and I've given them a fucking a job to do because <coughs> they're out of work. So I was like, I want my garden doing. Are your hands dead heavy today? Why? It, fucking table bongos. It's amazing that it wasn't me that said it. I didn't even notice it that much. Um, Imagine if I just slid my bum underneath. Go on. Underneath what? <laughs> your hands. I'll squeeze your ass if you want. I don't do very well to slide your bum <laughs> onto the top of the desk. Without, Adam, without, Adam, without Adam noticing. I got bread, cheese, pickle, and then me just sliding my ass in. Ooh. Um, oh, bloody hell. Yeah, me dad and me little brother, they're, they're, they're laying artificial grass in my back garden. And... Uh, I don't know how it's going to go because they've never done it before. They're just winging it. Just doing their best job. Okie doke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got them a ton of sand. Literally a ton as well. Yeah. My dad asked me to get him a ton of sand and I thought in my head he's just being hyperbole or something like just get me a bag of sand. He didn't want a bag you of mean, sand. Like when people go, oh mate, I've got a ton of sweets. Yeah. He actually wanted a metric a ton. ton. Of sand. Yeah, it wasn't like, it wasn't, yeah, in building terms, they don't usually go, can I have fuck loads of sand? <laughs> Right, we're getting the order together for Adam's new garden. How much artificial turf do you need? Shit loads. Right, I get fucking shit loads of that. <laughs> How much sand for underneath? F a fuck ton. Yeah, a fuck ton of that. Got the, yeah. got the uh, artificial grass from the B&M. Yeah. Really classic. They're well known. Yeah. That's where... 25 quid a roll. Wembley. Wembley's laid with B&M. Yeah, B&M. <laughs> it's it was 25 quid cheaper. a roll. And uh, I needed five of them. Right. I only paid for four. Well, hopefully it'll last till Ooh, August. That's no, the main yeah. thing, isn't it? Get a little steal. Did a little steal. I left it, so I had five rolls of the grass, and I, I made it so it was definitely the guy on the till's fault. Because obviously, when you've got loads of big stuff in your trolley, you just take one of them out, don't you, and tell them how many you've got. So I get. I'd, what I'd done is, I'd got like a, 
some plant pots and stuff as well. Pay for all of them. So there was like four of them. So I gave him the plant pots and said, there's four of them. And then I gave him something else and was like, there's three of them. And with the grass, I gave it to him and said, four more of them. Knowing he'd just put four in. But I didn't lie. And then when I got out, he didn't charge me for four. You know, it sounds amazing. It sounds Darren Brown mind control. And then you remember, he's just a 14 quid at B&M. How much did you save? 25 quid. Oh, 25. No, fair enough. Fair enough. That's, that's a whole sandwich. Yeah, but it's also 20%. Yeah. I work on percentages, not numbers. You know what I mean, if I save 20% of everything I spend this year, I might be a billionaire. Yeah, it's, yeah that's you how are, that works. I invest it really well. Right, you right, are 20% yeah. off a billion. No, if I save 20% of my income and buy Euro Millions ticket with that 20%, I'm a billionaire. I'd have to win another Euro Millions. Oh, we should start to have a weird syndicate, shouldn't we? No. Why? Because I want to be rich on my own. Why? Yeah, but you win the same amount. That's the whole fun of being rich, is to be more rich than everyone else. I don't Do you play be... the lottery now? I don't... No, but I imagine spending the money. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a ticket every three months and be like, fuck, if I see a jackpot, I'm like... But you've got like, if all that? the patrons do it, you've got a 4,000 times better chance of winning. Yeah, yeah, but imagine if we all win like 12 quid and we've got to spend that. Between he doesn't do the loss, he has 12 quid more than he'd ever have won. Mm. And yeah. we've got to split 12 quid between 4,000 people. Oh, that we take that. So your garden's getting done and you're paying your dad and brother with a barbecue. Is that what, is that basically what's happening I'll there? give them a bit of money as oh, well. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Fed them last night as well. Got them a chippy. And uh, Jack got food poisoning. So that was nice. Did he? Is that a little bonus? Yeah. The one yeah. by ours. The red That's one. the same theory as She's winning so... the Euro Millions and having other people not win it. You're like, ah, you got a chippy and your brother got the squids. That's a fucking... He threw up. That's oh. extra food poisoning, isn't it? Didn't just poo. Not just muck. No, no, no. Mouth muck. Mouth muck too. But how... How did, was that just bad luck? How did he get food poisoning and you didn't? Because he ordered something else. He got salt oh, and pepper right, chicken. Okay, I got salt and pepper ribs. Not the same thing. No, like, yeah. Different yeah. animals. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> the opposite of negligible. Um, is he all right? Yeah. Just did a vomit and then he said he was sound. Was so, in the bath when it happened. Where are you with, la- with this landscaping that's going on? Are you gen? Are you genuinely just letting them? Because this is all already making me feel a little bit. How how are you just like? Ah, I see what they do. See what they do, innit? Like I had grass in the garden, and I had fourteen flags. So I've took the fourteen flags up, got enough grass to cover all of that and a little bit more. Um, they've dug all the grass up, dug all the mud up, got them some compost to make it all level, got them the sand, got them, hired them a whacker. Yeah. Which isn't a Joe Pesci style whacker where you get Just killed. The, the plate where it flattens everything out. Yeah, hired them that this morning from HSS in Bootle. Shout out. <laughs> Did they give you 20% off? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and they reckon they'll, be, they'll have the grass laid tonight. Right. And if not, tomorrow. For me barbecue on Sunday, which I've now got to cut short because I forgot I had a gig. Mate, well, having... We could just stay in the house. Like, we're not going to, like, gangbang your missus. You know? That's so, reassuring. Yeah. I've told you now, so we can't. You no, know, if you're not going to gangbang someone, just yeah. don't bring up gangbangs. All right, we won't. Uh, nothing. Yeah. Do you think that was what was going through Adam's mind is the problem with the gig? Like, I wouldn't nip off and leave the barbecue, but, you know, it's a family barbecue and I don't want everyone gangbanging with my missus. It's not, it's not the main concern. Probably. Yeah, number one. It's the first <laughs> thing, isn't it? Yeah. First have we got, have we got, uh, We've got ribs, got chicken. Got the no gangbang waivers signed. Everyone signed a no gangbang waiver. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I bring my daughter. Bit of finger blanging. Um, <laughs> it's still not. Why okay. is that making me uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funnier because it's a kid doing it. I think that makes it funnier. What your kid finger? <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. The courts say it that way as well. Like it hadn't. He made even, me finger his bum all. It hadn't even. <laughs> It hadn't even occurred to me at all until you went. Ah, ah, ah. What happens if, he, if you if so, a kid just fingers your bummel? What happens? Like you haven't asked right. them. You haven't asked. You don't want it. <laughs> what in what situation is that going to happen? I mean, uh, in the sea. swimming bath changing room, or in the sea at the beach? In the sea at the beach. Talk oh. me through it, Carl. You're in the sea. Your yeah. bummel's out. Right. Why is your bummel out? Because <laughs> it's hot. All right, so you got legitimate, so you, a legitimate one is you're in the swimming bath, right? Sorry, that was you're on your own. What? That was an illegitimate one. 
<laughs> was a little bit, wasn't it? I'm naked in the sea, and I was walking backwards. Some children were playing volleyball. Next thing you know, <laughs> I'm speaking to the dad. You're in the swimming baths, right? In the changing rooms. You're on your own, right? And you're getting changed. And as you know, some men, especially older ones like you, they let themselves hang loose, don't they? In the swimming baths, changing rooms, they have the dick out, and they're just naked. So imagine this. You're in the changing rooms, you're completely naked, and you bend over to tie your shoes. <laughs> I don't know why you your shoes on and no clothes. Are you, why are you having to go at all old men for getting naked in the changing room? Like, everyone else is like, no one else gets naked in changing rooms. I keep me dick. That's private. a fact. Old men So you get changed it. in a changing room without getting naked at any point? Yeah, I put me on these. No, I don't get me dick out in the changing room. What? I don't get me dick out in the changing room. I'm normally with him. How'd you do that? I just put me undies on, like under my towel. Oh, right. Yeah. What, like a big lass at the beach? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It's t t absolute shit. I don't want to make everyone in the change room jealous. <laughs> oh, you're not in a little cubicle. You're actually in the changing area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you're right. fucking weird how to do that. In my own. head, you're in a cubicle. I don't know why. I was like, God, it's communal well, Some men get their dick out in the communal bit. Right, well, don't don't point at me. I get my little Tommy Johnson out in a cubicle. I'll go in and disable them and be like, this is a disability. Let me in that fucking cubicle. Right, okay. I don't need anyone going, hey, hey, hey what's that? So what's like a lifeguard, like, mate, are you coming in out? Like, what's the vignette, Adam? Tell so us. So you, you, you bend over to pick up your socks because you've dropped them on the floor. Right. And a kid comes over who's with their parents and just fingers your asshole vigorously. Right? Right. Who has assaulted who there? I mean, is the witnesses? Yeah. Right. I honestly, I would love to see the CCTV of that. <laughs> How quick is he standing up? What? Because if he's getting vigorously fingered, he wants to stay bent over. Well, initially, oh, but, but he doesn't realise it's a kid and he's enjoying it. <laughs> I mean, you could, like, you could, you could, you could, you could claim shock. Yeah, then I think the the fault is back on the uh, adult, <laughs> innit? Once you're like, oh, hello, that's the the fault goes back on the adult. Like, if if you're watching the CCTV and some bloke is like, oh, I'm just I'm just putting on my Velcro shoes, and then all of a sudden a kid's like, what is that? Boom! <laughs> like. You could, like, why did that guy not move? You could be, like, just through shock of, like, I wasn't expecting this. Like a dog, when it's biting someone, you put your finger up his ass. Yeah, yeah I always do that. <laughs> you meant to. It's just like that. I got naked in the sea in No, Egypt. but genuinely, what would happen there? Yeah, you can't move on from that, Carl. You're like, what would yeah, happen? we're done with that. <laughs> yeah, but boring that. There's no, you can't be like, next. <laughs> what would happen? Dan. I, th I, I really... It, it, I'm not talking from experience. What know. happened no. before was someone slightly misspoke. I tried to tell a story about Etta reading stories and then all of a sudden we're doing finger blanking. <laughs> so now, for some reason, I am, I'm representing all old blokes who weirdly get their asses fingered in a swimming pool. And I, order, do not want to be this guy. You, you're talking, Dan, this has happened to you at the YMCA <laughs> that you're now banned from. Come on, lad, tell the story. What happened in court, Dan? <laughs> I mean, you keep bringing it up. Carl, like, bored of this. I was in the sea once, <laughs> paddling. Well, let me tell you. Right. I think serious questions need to be asked about how long you were bent over. Not that I'm saying that. That's not like, you know, these girls on a night out. Well, what was she wearing? That's not fair, is it? At the same time, for an old bloke, if he's got, like, a bad back, mm. well, how long was he bent down? That almost suggests that he was asking for it. Right. As little Timmy comes up and goes, oh, no, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. And I'd say, this kid, little Timmy, let's call him little Timmy, mm. you know, can't call him a sex offender. He's just got a curious digit. <laughs> yeah. But I'd say the parents are going to have to step in because at some point he's going to lose that in a pencil sharpener <laughs> or in an old man's arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Again, why am I representing all old guys who've been fingered? Right, imagine, no, okay. imagine if the old guy just went, what's that? And then tensed up. And the kid was like... I can't get That's my a finger Chinese finger trap. Yeah. Hang on. Right, so how about I mean, this? it could be from anywhere. Right, you're bent over, right? Daru. You're, you're bent over, you're there. Not me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where's Laura? <laughs> Laura's gone. gone. Oh, God. Laura's there. Uh, no, it's not me. It's a random Laura, old guy. Laura's in the female changing rooms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Obviously. course, of course. You see, the, this is where I went wrong before, because when we've gone swimming... It, you, you all go in and then everyone changes in the cubicle. 
Because apparently the Ellesmere Port <laughs> swimming baths have had some really nasty Timmy fingering old men incidents and gone, enough's enough. <laughs> Get him in the family change. So you bent over? No, no. <laughs> order. Order. Just order. No, no. disbelief. No, Dan. I'm... No. Okay, I, I'm I, not. A really good friend of yours has bent over. Fault Dan. Right? Right. Uh, yeah. Just asking, asking about yeah. finger-blanging for a friend. Yeah, right. right. So he's bent over. Kid walks over. Right in. Gets two pumps. Is anyone else imagining <laughs> a small Adam as this kid? Yeah. Because there's not loads of kids going around going, la, la, if I see an asshole, let's get him. Fucking thing. Hey, sniff that. What's that? Time. Time. Bit of fucking zest of lemon. And an old lad called fucking Alfred from the fucking changing rooms. Get on. <laughs> hey, makes the Cubans even nicer. Adam, how do you make these posh sandwiches? Well, the ingredients. Bit of a fucking secret. You know the colonel at KFC? He's got fuck all on me. Chlorine and old lad. <coughs> Kid walks over, gets two pumps. Fuck off, fuck off. Right? To say fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> two pumps in a dry ass as well. Oh, but oh, it's, it's not dry. Swimming. Yeah. Wet as fuck. Water to is not a lubricant. What? Facts. Water is not a lubricant. Okay, well he spat on his finger then. Oh, <laughs> God. It's already the worst... Like, it's literally a game of, say the worst thing ever, in it, Right. So, before before we... Because then it shows intent, doesn't it? If the, if, if the kid's like, you know what I'm going to do, but hang on, I've been here before. He's a repeat offender. Fuck no. off, fuck off. No, don't shout. If the kid shouts, fuck off, fuck off, then I, it's all on him. He's a deviant. Right, okay, so the kid goes... Not this, right. don't do Says not on, just... Wah, wah. Right. What? <laughs> no, I think the old boy would be like, what? But the fella immediately goes, oh, get off, right? And then the fella's like, Who, whose kid's this? Yeah, and you've got to go big with that, right? I think. If you go, oh, you've got a millisecond. Yeah. And then you're in the wrong. So then you've got to go, hey, come on. <laughs> what the hell? I really think you've got to go big. So then, let's say that happens. Yeah. Is the kid... Legally responsible. Will he be sent to like a young offenders institution for fingering old men's bum holes? <laughs> With all the people who do the same sort of thing. Oh, yeah. One of those. The old, yeah. The there's, so there's actually institutions for them. It's state run. Yeah, it's a really bad thing. Or would, it be like, would the parent be able to be like, hang on, mate. What's happened here, essentially, is he's a kid. He's not culpable. You've put your bum hole round his finger. Yeah. Put a ring I on think, it. I think there's <laughs> there's got to be some visible moonwalking by the old boy <laughs> before that blame can be. Like, if the kid has gone, fuck off, fuck off. No one... Give it to my head. The fella getting fingered. And then going, nope, just fucking moonwalking. Right, <laughs> Which, if you know the history of Michael Jackson, would be apt. <laughs> oh, do you reckon he ever did? What? Moonwalked while he got fingered? No. Yes. No, I don't know. Yes. Were you in the sea once? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. How old's the kid? Eight. <laughs> in my head, he's under ten. Eight. He's got sketches on. Right. He's got sketches. Mm. What? And he rolls up. He's got one of those. He's got those. The heelys on. The heelys on. And armbands. Maybe yeah. if the kid's wearing heelys, then it's almost not his fault, then, isn't it? And he's he can just, get a run up. He was like, well. "Do you know what? I want to just go over there." <laughs> and he was rolling. I'm like, oh no. Oh, no, he awesome. spat on his finger and the two pump. <laughs> yeah. I really feel like Adam sort of ruined the. The, the oh, imagination I mean, I went. Goodness. No, as soon as you start going, and then this is what he, if he's doing that, yeah, it's like, why am I answering it seriously? It's Order. It's because you ask questions. I've got to answer them. I've got to explain the caveats. So, who do you reckon's going down there? I, if it happens, and yeah. you're the old boy, it's all, I mean, I'm not saying it's an allegory for all accusations, but I think you've got to be, when you've been accused of something, I need to see. I think we all need to see the genuine reaction of like, what the fuck just happened? What's this? Watch this shit. Hey, how dare you? As soon as the old man's like, oh. What if he liked it? The old no, man? Here's, here's the thing is even if he is incredulous like that, right? Then if it ever happens to him again, he's yeah. fucked, isn't he? Yeah. Even if it's a coincidence. Yeah. No one would believe that you've been fingered by two different children on no. two different occasions and it wasn't your fault. I think that's really solid logic. If you accidentally get fingered by, <laughs> what are we talking about, at a swimming bath once, I mean, you know, maybe. Maybe Fill it's an accident. Once. Twice, I think you've been... Finger pretty, me once. 
Shame, Shame on, on you. <laughs> Shame on me. <laughs> Finger me twice. How did I get back in the swimming pool? <laughs> Finger me twice. I shouldn't have been allowed what back in What if the fella loves it? What if he's like, yeah, who's broke the law then? Right. But it's just so ridiculous. It's almost like not worth considering, isn't it? Because if an old man bends over... You say over, that until it happens. An old man bends over and a child thinks it, it, it's very unlikely to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He might do. He hasn't been in touch in a while. Like the Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that macho man ran his head. Oh, listen, but... Um, well, I hope that helps with the... Did someone ask a question about that? Oh, no, we got there on our own. Great. Yeah. Did you paint this today? I just gave it a quick spray of... Uh, well, I've black, now got a black hand. Black paint. It's, it's a great way of stopping you playing fucking Des Bongos, isn't it? I sprayed the black stuff, didn't I? Got a black hand. You've been swimming. Anyway. <sighs> what are you up to the weekend? Half from again? I'm going out tomorrow night. What? Ooh. Yeah, swimming. Dancing shoes? Uh, no, I don't think so. We're going in, out into Chester for steak and beers. Who are you going with? A uh, couple of lads that used to work at the Laugh Inn. Yeah. Tony and Rummy, who both listen to the podcast, mates of Danny Mac. And there's only about 12 people in Chester, so we all know each other. Um, and we're going to go for steak. We tried to go to Hickory's, you know, the Smoke steakhouse. House. Oh, God, it's so good. Uh, but we couldn't get in because they got booked up ages ago. It's just so popular. But yeah, we're going for steak and beers and stuff. And I am pretty excited. Laura, not as excited. Is she not going? She's accepted it. But the uh, phrase she used, I was like, it's all right, isn't it? She went, it is what it is. Which I don't think is a ringing endorsement of me starting my you social life again. That? People on Love Island have just been dumped. <laughs> It is what it what is. It is. <laughs> yeah, so we're going out, and I, um, I'm i going to try and keep it relatively on the tracks. Why? I'm a little bit out of practice. I'm not pub fit. Like, you said you've been going out loads. You, I mean... So you're not going to be doing coke off your T-bone? No. I turned you on a bit, that didn't... <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, because you can like steak and you can like cocaine, but to do them at the same time seems like a little bit foolish. I, uh, Yeah, it's not going to be... Not going to be one of one of them nights. Genuine it's question. It's going to be four or five beers, maybe. Genuine question. Four or five beers. Six, maybe. How long do you think you're going to be out for? I don't know. I'm saying four or five beers because I'm I'm doing that thing where I'm like I'm not planning to get shitted because you know two hours don't want it. When your wife is like, oh, I'm all right going out, and she's like, it is what it is. It's not. I can't come back with my that, pants like around. Four my head. beers is a maximum of two hours, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I might have m more beers then. Six beers. I'll I'll keep a check well, on it. Beers. I'll put it in the WhatsApp group for the podcast. Like, Adam, I'm up to seven. Yeah. Good lad, Dan. Yeah. And I know, like, it's and really... if Laura kicks off, just give him my number. I'll explain to her. That, and that'll sort it. How she's money. being really unreasonable. Yeah. And then I'm divorced, and then I can live alone. And that's great. Do more podcasting. Got a couch there. Brilliant sleep on the couch. You've got a garden office. Yeah. The garden office was built partially as, as a defense mechanism for... Get out of this house! I will! I'll That's your divorce the bunker, isn't it? It's the divorce People have bunker. like World War II bunkers. You've got a divorce bunker ready. Yeah. It hasn't got a toilet, but, you know, in times yeah, of strife, in the garden. you can piss garden's in the garden. basically one big toilet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope that by the time Jack and your dad have finished with it, yours doesn't look like a massive garden. This is where you shit. This is where you piss. Um, so, yeah, going out. Different places. I feel like very... <laughs> I feel like it's two separate things, isn't it? In a, in a, when you're weeing in... No, no. You ever done a poodle doing a wee? impossible yeah yeah it's, it's like a uh it's like there's a, i've said this before it's like there's two buttons right but the poo one overlaps the wee one yeah so if you press the poo button the wee button comes with it you know what i mean because you've got to reach here so it, pff, you can just press the wee one you can't just like you can't do that uh, adam like, studied biology like oh, the flush yeah. on the toilet like the light flush and the heavy flush. yeah oh man yeah. I don't Poo think is I've ever used a heavy flush. Don't yeah. think I've ever used the different settings on one of those toilets. Because yeah, who wants to light flush the I just toilet? Literally wants to just get rid of a bit of the press. Shite? Yeah, I don't think the light flush is for you know. It's not for a shit, is it? It's just for a little for a a whid whoop. whiddle. I just press the thing. I just press both of them like uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so going out. Thanks for you. I feel like you've given me, like you even asked about it a few days ago. When's your night out? I feel very like weirdly patronized. Like 
He's doing really well. He's 40. His dick and balls are on a shelf somewhere, but he's going out for beers. In the time it's that I've had this kid, you have been out on 42 nights out. That's it. Your first night out after a baby, especially your first night out after a baby during a pandemic, is a lot like your first date after a divorce, isn't it? Or the first date after a breakup. That's, it's like it's not a bad. Analogy. Are you excited? Don't 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 feel like you owe these guys anything. Okay, take it slow. If they really like you, they'll see you again. <laughs> Even if you don't do everything they want you to do, they'll see you again if they really like you. What are you wearing? Dad? I feel like I'm nervous what now. Are what are you wearing? I don't know. You getting your brown shoes? Cargo on? pants. No. no. Um, jeans, not what I was wearing on last week's episode. Cause jeans, I got jeans, absolutely jeans. hammered. I, I, I think I'll go jeans. Should jeans. I go jeans? Yeah. Shirt or S- button up shirt or t shirt or shirt. I might go pack. the Adam Rowe t shirt, like fashionable jacket. Nice. What do you think? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about shoes? Trainers? Yeah, the New Balance ones, do you like? They, you yes, think they're all right? Nice. Yeah, Don't go cool, shoes. cool, 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 cool. Don't yeah. go like eyeliner. Do I wear eyeliner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And your third eye. Yeah. Hat? Always hat. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's my what? night out clubber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not one of these, though. Bowler hat thing. <laughs> Bowler hat. Top yes. hat. <laughs> Top hat. For my visit to Buckingham Palace. Good day to you, madam. What and do you that. call it, then? Trilby, isn't it's it? It's a pork pie hat. Pork pie hat? Yeah, the one I wear on stage is pork pie. Yeah, man. What about a top hat? You'd look good in a top hat. I'd look you like would. a fucking dick. At Chester, in Chester, you wouldn't look all that out of place because it's a little northern Tory stronghold in places. You know people have like massive, like long heads. They should wear top hats because then people think it's just a hat, but actually they've got a long <laughs> head under it. Great advice. Filter. Great advice. So if you've ever been fingered by a child in a swimming pool bathroom, <laughs> or if you've got a long head and you've never thought about wearing a tall hat, Adam Rowe, ladies and gents, he's giving advice here, here to there, help. and everywhere. Dan, would you wear a kipper? <laughs> a yacht like a. Yeah. A yam you mean a yamaka thing? It's not a kipper. Kipper's a fish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A yamaka. You mean the the school cat, a Jew, a Jewish school cat. I thought it was called a kipper. Two P's and an A and a H. Do you want to pull that up? Because I feel like Finn The Kappa make kippers. Finn Finn's had a look on his in his face for a lot of this episode going, lads, I really want to keep this job. <laughs> so could you just not some yet? Yeah, kipper. Oh, it's a kipper. What's a yamaka then? There's a Leeds on there as well. Oh, similar. Maybe it's different ages or something. Okay, dope. I want a Kappa Kipper for me, Kristen. A Kappa Kipper? And I want a Yamaha made, Yamaka. Made, like, as in Kappa the old. Yeah. Yeah. A Kappa Kipper? A Kappa Kipper? Yeah. If you've got any. And I wear it while I'm having a cuppa. If you've got. <laughs> If you've got a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah in your family, if you've got any Jewish uh, have a word lids, uh, please can you invite Adam and us to your family get together? Do you reckon there's any coppers who've at got the Kappa synagogue? Kippers? I reckon Kepper, the Chelsea goalkeeper, does. Kepper, mm. the Chelsea goalkeeper, has got a Kappa Kepper, and his dad's a copper. And he loves a copper. It's definitely time for a break, like a hundred percent. I'm going crazy. Got them crazy eyes. How's your black hands? It's only a black sort of thumb bum. Do you know, like the bottom of your thumb. <laughs> the thumb bum? Like the rest of my hand's still. Sorry. What do you call it? Your thumb bum. Yeah. What, the fat bit at the end of your thumb? Yeah. Have you ever does grabbed it, you? Does, does everyone call it the thumb bum? No. That's the cutest that's thing. What I, I call it? The palm of my hand. Yeah. No, because this bit's also the palm. That's not just the... That's the thumb bum. <laughs> You've invented that. I'm right so there. glad I didn't press fucking the button. Adam, he's so cute. That's the fun bum. <laughs> My mum said that was always the fun bum. Yeah. And, and and sometimes I'm like, have I got a big bit, bit at the bottom of my thumb? And she was like, some people like a bit of junk in the fun bum. Oh, he's a little cute, isn't he? <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, listen to this. This podcast, have a word, yeah, is sponsored by beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. 
they send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word all you do pay the postage and packaging eight free beers free beer magazine and a little tasty snack as well and also it helps us out you support our sponsors they support us this thing can keep going we can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track so go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing I've had a really itchy gooch for like three days but you can't just itchy gooch in public because it looks like you're picking your asshole. So we've had some questions. Um, <laughs> 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 but you've been out in public for three days. What? Have you been out in public for three days? I'm always out in public. No, but I mean, surely one good itch has sorted it. Have you had three days? De- like, no, that wouldn't be There's a no really, relief. No, that wouldn't be a really itchy gooch, would it? That would be an itchy gooch. It's an itchy gooch. Slightly itchy gooch. I've got right. a really itchy gooch. Like right now, I want to get this and itch me gooch with it. That's too soft. That's not, that's not going to help, is it? No. Oh, dear. Oh dear. It's actually scrap. Oh, oh, dear, everyone. Just for the audio listeners, you don't want to know. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Use the gavel. It smells like time. Garlic, though. <laughs> Memories. Um. Steve Harper says, Hi, Alana and Deirdre. I hope you guys are doing well. Love the pod. It's Boss. Had an idea for the live shows. If you rented polygraph machines and then strap used both into one, you could ask each other horribly personal questions and the whole crowd would know if it was truth or a lie. Also, what questions would you like to ask each other in this scenario where a big crowd of people would instantly know if it was bullshit or well, not. Well, I'm not going to answer the second Cheers, part of that. Steve. Because I'm going to save those questions for when we absolutely definitely are doing this. Yeah. The first thing I uh, e- I just emailed back today, I was like, that is wonderful. You're going to do a polygraph on a live show. You're going to do it as well. I'm producing it, unfortunately. Me and what? Finn are busy producing no. Finn, Finn can produce that one. We'll oh, get yeah, Finn to answer them on a second too, live it's show. It's a big question. Bit, bit why, big. Why, what are you worried about? Because you're asking me something ridiculous. Like what? I don't know, you're not going to ask me now because you're not going to get ready for the answer. But what, you, you're you involved with the podcast that in that first section, we spent way too long talking about an imaginary eight-year-old finger-blanging an old dude in a swimming bath and now you're like, I would never want certain truths to come out. Like, you're already on a fucking podcast. He's got a wrecked penis. By animals. Six Hang on, that wasn't a truth. Or, no, I know, but I mean, it's not like you're... Like a true, like an MP or something. You're not like a trusted. It is, yeah. Local councillor. You're already like living the animal lifestyle. So why why would the polygraph be a problem? Because okay, it's fine. That's my first question. Going to be when you're hooked up. I'll get it out to you once. Okay, let's well, get a wreck first. Yeah. <laughs> you grower, not a shower. I mean, every every man's a. Nobody goes smaller when they grow, do they? That's a really good point. No, no, but like, there's no one's a shower, not a grower. <laughs> yeah. Like he just walks around with a nine-inch dick. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not, but it's always nine inches. I got told years ago it doesn't grow, does and it? And this might be speaking wildly out of ten. I don't think. Where has that ever stopped us? Go. You'll see why in a minute. So there was a girl who worked with me in McDonald's. Um, let's. This isn't her name, but let's call her Rhiannon, right? Didn't need a name, but now she's got one. Definitely Rhiannon. a name as well. <laughs> it isn't. It really isn't. But now I've just realised I work with someone else in McDonald's called Brianna Noom. If she does listen to this, my thing is about to say. So it's Adam not. made up a name. I went, oh, God, I need another name. I'll go for one of the other girls that works <laughs> at McDonald's. That'll get round it. Poor Rhiannon, who used to work at McDonald's. Have you seen that? I'll have a word. So basically, she was dating two people at the same time. And one of them was white and one of them was black, right? Okay. And in the, diversity, good. In the staff room one day. No, they weren't in the dance room. Rhiannon was really ahead of her time. She fucked people like... <laughs> <laughs> like Mock the Week, Book the Panels. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of diversity. Um, Rhiannon, where are the uh, where are the female partners? Sorry, God. And we were talking in the, in the green room, <laughs> the staff room. 
The staff room. I talking it. in the staff room. And one of the lads made a joke. was like, obviously, you'll stay with the black guy because you've got a bigger dick. And she was like, it's not even true. The thing about black guys having bigger dicks. The thing is, on flop, their dicks are bigger. But then they just get hard and they yeah. don't go any bigger. I know a shower and he says it just gets hard. It doesn't get any bigger. And you know him as well. Okay, doc. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, not sure what to do with that. Uh, in I mean, I'm a grower. It's, 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 you are. I'm a grower, yeah. I think everyone here is. Oh, I'm a, a grower. I could have just done with more growth. Yeah. Like, I go from like, good God, are you all right? Is that a medical condition too? Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> that's my level of growth. So, like, people like, ah! To like, people. Ah. Like, to like, whoa. People. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. You're doing this in the museum. Ah. We're all growers in here, Finn. Why the why museum? Adam? Just because people are watching you. Like in museums. Grower? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's a professional comedian. Just went, you're doing this in a museum. <laughs> Not one of the paid gigs that you do in front of people who are watching you. Museum. That's where Dan will get his dick out. What about one of the live shows for Have a Word? Nah, nah, he's not going to get his dick out there. But what, museum. Would, would you ever, at a live show, get your dick out? Because we've spoke so much about your Todger. I'll well, show me. I'll show me scar for me reduction surgery. Would you get your dick out? Honestly, that would give me the Patreon uh, thank you show. Would you get your little nuggets out? <laughs> would you get your bum all out as well? But, yeah. It's but, coming in the fire. Is this what people want? Like, it's all very well. When Brennan at the live show which, that we streamed in December, when we shaved his ass, it wasn't like pre planned. The way we're doing it is like, would you get your dick out? It's like, there's almost like no fun and playfulness about it. Like, right, ladies and gents, it's been a really good show. Now Dan's going to get his little dick out. Look at that. Now he's crying. He would go absolutely mental for it. Right. Isn't that I mad? think that, like, you know. Got to find a way to top shaving someone, waxing someone's asshole. Like there is only one top. I thought getting your dick out would be a good end to a show, right? But obviously, we do everything together in this show, Adam. Ah, don't we? We've 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 split the profits. We've done it. You know, it's my, yours and mine right from day one. Uh -huh. So if little, you know, if the little captain's coming out, <laughs> then you know, then the big captain's got to yeah, come out. Yeah, well. the weapon of mass destruction's got to come out. I'll get me the house if you get your dick out. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Can we get a sponsor for it? Oh, Man Manscaped, we've already got a sponsor for it. Um, no, they can sponsor the pubic region. You can't <laughs> shave your dick with a Manscaped thing. I, well, I wouldn't risk it anyway. Right. Um, it's mad that you shave your dick. It still blows my mind. The old hair on your dick, I just don't want a hairy dick. It's mad. <laughs> your little fucking... Yeah, let's get it out. But maybe we could get like a sex toy company to give us like a cock ring I'll each. Have a, dick. a cock ring. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or some dick jewelry. As if that. <laughs> what, what's dick jewelry? What? What is dick jewelry? A dick like jazzle. An earring for your dick. A dick jazzle. An ear like a Prince Albert. What's that? You know what a Prince Albert is? No. Like and what? No, I don't. What? You know what a Prince Albert yeah. is? Really? Is yeah. it a ring that goes through your bell end? Yeah. Right. No, I wouldn't want that. I want like yeah. two earrings, one on each of my balls. Me not knowing what it was isn't the reason I've not got one. You know, like, <laughs> oh, no, oh, now that. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> to the piercing shop. Uh, you no, you I'm not. Get, I'm not. I couldn't think it, it's actually making me. I don't, I don't do this podcast with my bald head out. I'm not doing a live show with my little knob out. You don't have to keep it out for the whole show. Oh, I don't want to get my... at the end? No. Just a quick like, woo! The only thing that makes me want to get your dick, my dick out is for you to get your dick out. So everyone's like, what? Would you get that done? No. I'm not going to put this on the screen. No. You can Google <laughs> it yourself. Google we'll get us demonetized. No! <laughs> <laughs> Turn that off. What the fuck was that? It was a piece. Don't drop box it to yourself, Finn. Good <laughs> Lord. Would you ever get like two like hoop earrings, one on each ball, just put through your bag? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. I would. I would. What's that called? The Queen Victoria? What are you on about? <laughs> Not getting my little knob out at any live shows. The only sadness there is that Adam doesn't get his not as big as he's made out penis. Oh, that would be headline in the what show. What was the question? <laughs> It was about the lie detector. Oh, it was oh, the yeah. lie detector, and, and Adams went straight to your dick. 
<laughs> like he didn't even take much thinking time. Like, what lie detector polygraph? I've never seen. Carl's I would dick. say. Yeah, he's a very private person. I've seen Adam's dick once. Yeah, and it was angry. and he took his fucking eye out. Was it? It was angry. <laughs> was it Harry Potter too? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At the end, the Chamber of Secrets. There's a big. Oh, the basilisk. There's big, yeah, there's Harry a basilisk too. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, never heard it called that. That's, that's true. Secondary I've seen it bar. once and it, he, he Can we just do the jar rule that I absolutely deserve? It oh. feels worse that no one did Kobe or jar rule. I actually felt like worse that. Thank you. Thanks for doing jar rule. Wow. If you really tank a joke and then everyone's like, that was so bad it doesn't even deserve a jar rule, you're like, <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I thought Harry it, Potter 2. Like a big snake at the end of Harry Potter 2. My dick is <laughs> adequate. It that's all, that's all a dick needs to be. Yeah. If it does a job, that's it. You're not fucking knocking down walls, would it? No. Smashing puss. Yes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, Dan Barnes says, I lit, had an all day in Liverpool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Are we doing a polygraph at the Underbelly show? Tickets still on sale, by the way, on the Underbelly website in London, Cavendish Square, the 19th of September. Sunday the 19th. Selling fast. It is selling really fast. Thanks to everyone who's bought tickets so far. Uh, there's people travelling from all over the country for it. Which we appreciate. But if you haven't booked them yet, the fuck are you waiting for? Hey. Gobshite. The link will be in the uh, in the YouTube comment uh, not comments in the description. Yeah. Could and you the Spotify description and all that shit. Have you stuck it in the pod bean as well? Oh god for Ooh, you. Oh, that good. sounds dirty though. You're good. Stick it in the pod bean. That sounds like a uh, euphemism. Are we doing it? I'm I am like Yeah, maybe. It's a maybe, isn't it? Why? If you if you want to do a polygraph. We we'll get Jeremy Kyle down, he's not busy now. No. What happened to Jeremy Kyle? Uh, someone, need killed, him. Need Graham. someone killed himself after yeah. the show and they blamed him for right. orchestrating it. To be fair, there was 20 years of him basically bullying poor people on a <laughs> on a set in Manchester, wasn't it? Yeah. I can't believe you fucked three other women from the estate. Like In the end, hmm. someone's going to be like, apparently my mates used to work on Jeremy Kyle and it was just, at, it was like Animal House the night before because they all stayed in that hotel near Granada Studios and it was all booting off because they'd come at, like, if you've never seen Jeremy Kyle, either because you're an international listener or whatever, it was our version of... Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Springer. But more and rough. What? It was more rough. Yeah, I think they were pretty rough on Jerry Springer. No, I don't mean rough they? as in fighting. I mean just, like, rough, rough air people, I think. No, but they were rough on Jerry Springer, weren't they? Jerry Springer. They were just American rough. rough. Yeah. There was a lot of, like, she fucked him and I never said nothing, not my baby. You know? From Stockton, was, Stockton on teeth. Can you expand on that story? She fucked him, and that's not that. That is not my baby. <laughs> <laughs> is that his baby? Have you put it over here? And I remember she fucked him, and that's not my. I'm not saying that's his baby. Is that I'm just saying though? that's not my baby. That's a woman's voice as well. Hey, I don't ever assume gender. No. You don't hey, see gender. I remember distinctly. We were watching Harry Potter two. <laughs> 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 the puttering. And, um, you know, he's not my baby. They were rough on Jerry Springer, weren't they? Yeah, they were, I suppose. So we just, that's our version of rough. Yeah. But it was, apparently it was just fights and, like, people getting fucking hammered at the hotel bar. And then they'd all turn up hungover. So what you were watching a lot on Jeremy Kyle was all those people going, you fucking, I can't believe you, and you were doing this with her. While they were hungover, so it was extra eggy. I just always sort of... Thought with that, I didn't say it about Jeremy Kyle when I first asked out, as a lot of people did. Um, I never understood how you end up on that show. Like, if I'd shagged someone behind me, Mrs. Back, or and she was like, Right, I don't believe you, we're going on Jeremy Kyle. I just there's nothing that could be offered to me to convince me to do that. Money, no, no, I don't think they paid. I thought they did. I mean, I'm not, I'm not 100%. But I, I'm pretty sure they didn't pay. They just got the travel expenses right. to Manchester and a hotel for a couple of nights. It's not You're the people making a twat out of yourself on a Sally. Yeah, but yeah. it's like the people who send have a words in. You can almost understand if people are into this podcast and they go, ah, something's going on, and these lads love a bit of this, so I'm going to ask them to fuck around and talk a about paternity it. test. But like, but it's the same thing with Jeremy Kyle. If you're sat there going, oh my god, I think I've been wronged, or he's been cheating on me. I watch Jeremy Kyle. I'd like to fucking fuck him over on TV. No, I get, I get that. Why would the guy then be like, all I, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I get if why, you're going on. I'm going to go on. I get why the person going, you fuck. Me over wants to go on 100% attention 
and resolution. The person who knows they fucked up. Why are they going? All right. It's dying with the lie, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I'm not lying. Of course I'll go on. I'm sure there was a load of applications where the guy was like, nah, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. But it, yeah, you've got to be a certain level of daft to do it. Um, there was a it, great episode once. They it was so cheated rough. on each other and the kid wasn't his. Like they both did lie detectors. They both cheated and the kid wasn't his because they did a thing. <laughs> it was just beautiful. They did a DNA test. Yeah. So he, she, she like been accused of cheating by him and to get her to go on, she'd gone, life and you've cheated on me. You do one. And he's gone, I will. And we're doing a percentage test as well. And they went on. She did the lie detector. And it was like, yeah, she's been shagging everything. And he was like, you fucking horrible, disgusting bitch. And then his come out. And it was like, yeah, he's been shagging everyone as well. <laughs> and she was like, you hypocritical twat. You've had to go at me for this, 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 and this. You've been doing everything. I can't believe you. And then they did the DNA test. And it wasn't his. And he just walked off. It was, oh, beautiful television. Yeah. That kid's doing fine. I'm sure that kid's <laughs> doing fine. No one worry about that. Beautiful television. There's this child like, uh, the kid's not on the show, is it? No. The kids aren't there, are they? Yeah. I can't. I, I watched Jeremy Carl a few times, but. Yeah, they don't no let the chill. kid open the envelope. See if it's your dad. But we've got three guests. No. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> and she's not even your mum. So I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Fucking hell. How much do you like white light in I Sandra? do think sometimes, you know, like when. Like, I wonder if she knew who the dad was after that. Because I know a girl who, um, <laughs> she was a promiscuous lady, and she... Just pick a name. Rhiannon. Rhiannon. <laughs> right. No, Rhiannon. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, she, she's quite open about the fact that she loves the cock. She's a shagger. Yeah. And Nothing she, wrong with it. Nope. She got shagged by four lads in one night. Oof. <laughs> I mean, just logistically... That's difficult. Yeah. And got pregnant. Oh, wow. And had the baby. And she was just like, I don't care whose it is. It's just my baby. And she's still bringing that kid up now. Okay. She just didn't want to... She's, she's got no idea who's out of that. Did they all look the same, all the lads? There wow. wasn't like... Yeah, four identical quadruplets. Wasn't like... A... I mean, was she definitely sure it was that night? Can you... I mean... I don't know. You know, because if you bang it... So if you get pregnant and you're, de and you're definite it's that night, you probably going could assume that you haven't had sex for a couple of weeks before or a couple of weeks after. If you're shagging four people in a night, you've probably been up to something the week before and the week after, haven't you? It's yeah. not like, I honestly, I like to have a quiet month. A lot of people think, you know, do four separate Saturday nights. I just like, you know, like comedians sometimes like do pay doubles, day. triples. Yeah. Pay day. Yeah. She shags. <laughs> she shags like London comics do quadruples. <laughs> <laughs> She's got an agent. Um, Do you reckon the fourth wow. fella knew he was number four that night? Yeah. I don't know. I do. I mean, we'd, I'd love to genuinely have the story of how, how, you, how you sort of make it work. Because it's not like, right, okay, we're going to schedule it. Quarter past six. Terry, you're coming round. You've got like a restaurant with COVID. You've, got, you've only got an hour and a half. And then we have got the table booked at eight. And then fucking. Who's next? Stee. Teddy. Stee. 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 Jacko. Jacko. Yeah. And last? Mubarak. But it'd be obvious if it was his. Why? You're just assuming his race. <laughs> based hey, on his name? Stee's Asian. <laughs> Wait, how did you not know that? Yeah. Couldn't infer it from the... That's like, Stee? From Rajasthan. Rajasthan. <laughs> just picked an area of India. Just felt safer than saying Pakistan. Got any more questions? Tom? More questions. <laughs> uh, Will says, "Hi, Lids. I'm a musician from Ireland, and I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see what uh, you say." Question one: What he's doing, Bants? He's literally Did he say he's, what, ri yeah? he's written what? what? What is your opinion on Ed Sheeran? What's your opinion, opinion of Ed Sheeran? Hardly gets mentioned, doesn't he? The little ginger whisk kid. Have you seen what? It wasn't ready for. The little ginger whiz kid. The ginger whiz kid. <laughs> yeah. I just wasn't ready for it. Have you seen his house? We were talking about this on the way to the... We've been uh, around for a while, have we? On Monday. No, last week we had a Saturday. Ed Sheeran's house. I don't, I just think he's largely inoffensive. He's probably dead sound, but... He knows how to make money and how to make successful music, but I don't like it. 
Laura's really into Ed Sheeran and it's sort of done, I've done that thing of like, I've never been bothered. I've been aware of him. I thought the A-Team was great when I first heard it. Um, and then there's been some tunes over the years that you're going, oh, yeah, it's all right. It's a good pop song. But then because Laura's into it, I've ended up listening to it a lot more. He's, he's yeah. Go on. What's happened? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't think you had something to say, but you wanted the premise. What? <laughs> Where were you? You said you listened to the A-Team. <laughs> and in my head, I went, that was a TV show. Oh, It'd be funny if I said... On the wireless. Was that on the wireless? But then you'd need the context. So I just decided I was just going to enjoy it to myself instead of <laughs> put on the episode. And then I laughed at it. And Carl... I saw the cogs up. working. Sometimes it, it gobsmacks me that we're having the success we're having. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know some of it. There's some moments where I'm like, that really made me laugh. And the other times I'm like, the A-team is the name <laughs> of a TV show. And the A-team is the song, but... <laughs> What I could do is, and then the fact that you check yourself and went, no, I'm not going to do that. Because I, that, no. And then you were like, hmm, but it would have been good. And then Carl was like, last, last, shut up. Something's going on. <laughs> He's made fucking millions. How do you feel about him? Can you give the Finn the mic? Because you're a musician, Finn. Is he someone you look up to? Uh, I really like the first two albums. He's He's just done amazing for himself and... It's just him, isn't it? We were talking about this. It's just him. So the amount of money he's making on a tour is insane. He's got no but band. He just turns up with his loop pedal and can play a fucking stadium. He's. A, I'd be he, more likely to go and see him if he was like one of those one-man bands and it was Ed Sheeran, but he's got like a drum and a harmonica. <laughs> what? <laughs> like Dim, Dick Van Dyke at the start of Mary Poppins? in the class A team. That's what I'm doing. No, no. <laughs> what? Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> That's the triangle. It's <laughs> the least efficient, <laughs> the least efficient one man band ever. I must see what I'm doing. That's, the, that's half a bagpipe. The and they're the lyrics. <laughs> no, that's him playing the harmonica, but I haven't got one, so I need to. <laughs> Adam's got a loose image of what a one man band guy looks like. I think it's a while since he's watched Mary Poppins. And then just. <laughs> He's got a triangle up here. Ding, ding. Boop, boop, boop. And then... Up, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> why, is, why does the triangle have to be up here? Where else are you going to put it? Down here. Why? Don't oh. explain one man man to him. <laughs> Where are you going to put a triangle? You've got to sell a tape into a stick from your dad. There's no other place for the triangle. <laughs> you could just sell a tape a bit of metal to your dick and just bang it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Adam play one man band. How clever is that though? That's like com that's comedian smart. Just not having a band. That's like that's exactly why I always think <laughs> being in a band must be fucking murder because you've got to do rehearsals and then pay everyone. The best thing about being a comic is just turning up, being like, "We're in a band, though, aren't we?" Yeah. I, I suppose so. Band of brothers. This is my guitar. But we just come to one place where all the stuff is. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you play it like a guitar. We, uh, we just cut, it's not different from being a touring musician and being a touring comic. Yeah. yeah. Where every, like, there's five nights a week you're going to different places. That's yeah, exactly I why I love less... being a comic. You just turn up and like, I love it when they're like, have you got any tech requirements? A microphone and I'll be all right. I, I, I don't think I'd do as many gigs if I had to take my speakers with me. Do you know what I mean? Like what, like the, the shit gigs? Yeah. So in comedy, there's a lot of gigs where part of the, it's the most depressing thing. Like, right, we are looking for an opener and a headliner and also a, a compa host who's getting paid one third the opening acts fee, but you've got to bring your old PA and mic. And you're like, oh God, <laughs> oh God. Um, you pl you'd surely play the saxophone as well, wouldn't you, Adam? What? You'd surely play the, the self saxophone. I'd play the saxophone if I was a woman man as well, yeah. So no harmonica, actually. You'd have a so it's just... <laughs> Can you say you're not into Ed Sheeran? That was, I think, was that off his third album? Ed <laughs> 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 
about drugs this about prostitution triangle saxophone bagpipe me dick I play me dick this would have been bigger operation so Ed Sheeran yeah covered yeah I, I like him yeah <laughs> Right, I'm trying to find a question that is silly, uh, is matching the silliness of the general mood. Sometimes with the questions, I think, oh, it'd be nice to be offset some of the bullshit with an actual question. And then there's times where you can just judge the room when it's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely pointless. Uh, the goat writes in, hi, lads. Not sure if you heard, but the viral Charlie bit my finger video has been taken off YouTube to be sold privately as an NFT like selling a painting or a piece of artwork, such as an unmade bed to a private owner. Two questions. If you could own... Whoa! Let's park the fucking transit van for a second. You can't sell. Oh, so. I saw the perfect description of what an NFT is. A non-fungible token. Someone someone did a Mona Lisa analogy of it. Right. Um... No, but here's my point. Right, you can figure that out for a sec. Here's my point, Dan. The unmade bed, we all know. If you're a long-time listener, you'll know. Tracy Emmons' art piece, the unmade bed. I've got a bit of beef with it. I think she was a lazy twat. Couldn't be asked doing a painting. So she was like, I'll just give them that. That's my opinion. I understand that some people think that's reductive. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is definitely reductive. <laughs> that's not the subjective bit. Some people think that is reductive. <laughs> I don't. I think he's fucking spot on. I think she's a grubby bitch. She should have tied it in the bedroom instead of picking it all up, taking it to a fucking museum. But here's my point. Right. Oh, go. <coughs> I know. I said ha- the wrong word. Hand on, hand on heart. Finger I back. can understand, like, like being totally serious, I can understand why people are going... Serious? Mm-hmm. Are we serious now? Serious. Right? right. So as much as I think it's bollocks, <laughs> that art piece, right? I can smell your fingers. Right? Time. Got time on my hands. You've been swimming. Right? It's it, thing. It's thing. It's me thing. Right? He's making a point. I right? think the bed thing is bollocks. But, but I get what you're on about where you're like, it's a comment on the world because she's done this. Right? It's a comment on depression. <laughs> I said that, but I know what you mean. Right? You get what I mean? Yeah. All right. But selling that to a private collector is bollocks because... Him making, unmaking his bed, he could just do that himself and it's no worse because she hasn't painted it. Oh my no, God. No, 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 Why no. Why are you always on about painting? No. It's more of a no. sculpture than a painting. Okay. Art right. isn't just painting, you okay. fucking Crayola okay. obsessed motherfucker. Okay, okay, right. Let's take your point then. It's more like a sculpture, right? If you hire a sculptor, it's because they're good. Oh. Shut up a minute. It's because they're good at sculpting. So you can't sculpt yourself as good as that because there's a skill to it. There's no skill to not making your bed. We're not. So he could just not make his bed and it makes the same point about depression as his did. Yeah, no, but his won the Turner Prize. Oh yeah. my God. What? Are we actually going to do Tracy Emin's bed when we're talking about NFTs? How are we, how are you got, you, you, you brought it up. No. No, you did. What? You said like Tracy Emin's bed. No, oh, he brought it up. He brought it up and I read it. <laughs> Still, you bring it up. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you, Harry Robinson. <laughs> Dan Johnson's the goat again. Um, I really wish I'd not read that bit because it, Adam cannot get past Tracy Emin's bed, he and it, it doesn't so matter what you think, and it doesn't matter what I think. It's like just because you go, shut, fucking, I've got a fucking shitty bedroom. Am I an artist? No, <laughs> no. Like, but we've got past that. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. If no, you get it? given a space in an art gallery to do something, it's not about being amazing with like sculpting or Mm -hmm. painting. It's about going, Mm -hmm. this is a space. I want people to come into this space and I will make them think, feel things by just observing whatever I've done. All sorts of conceptual art has been done over the years. It's everything. It's not just sculpture and painting. And that's what she chose to do. You're not asked. Loads of people were. It was of its time. People slagged it off. Fine. Right. Yeah. But... How how does that relate no. to NFTs? Because please, but, we cannot talk about you going, it's just a fucking bed. No, I'm not saying that anymore, am I? 
I've come halfway over to your side and said, I get that the point she's trying to make. But once she's made that point, some daft twack on, I'll buy that, 8 million quid. Yeah. Right? There's no need to do that because if he takes it out of the art gallery, it might as well just be his bed. <laughs> right. That's right. I see what you're saying. If someone buys it and then takes it home... <laughs> Yeah, where are you? If it's a sculpture, where are you putting it? Sculpture, a sculpture, a sculpture, or a painting. Then <laughs> I understand that. Or a painting. That's the painting right. and the skill to it, as well as uh, as well as whatever it's trying to say. Do you know that the Tracy Emin's bed is not in a rich guy's hallway? It's not like <laughs> you must come through. We're having drinks in the parlor. First of all, have you seen this lovely piece? Uh, I'm sorry. Brian, it looks like a really untidy bedroom here. Actually, it's a very clever art piece. It's in an art gallery, isn't it? In a like it's in its own. You also know thing. that patents aren't NFTs. Someone said Mona Lisa. No, no, no. The Mona Lisa was used as an analogy. So it's like someone going, "Do you want to buy the Mona Lisa? Yeah, hundred million, please. Can I take it home? No, no, you don't own it. You own the receipt to it. So you can tell people it's yours, but you can't actually have it. That's essentially what an NFT is. Right. right. It's okay. I get it now. So it's it's because. The internet and all the stuff that's been going on there, like you can basically clip out these memes or even GIFs or short videos, and what they're saying is, and people are selling them, aren't they? Like Tim Dillon just sold a, an NFT, which I think was a clip from his podcast, and he, he was in his head he was going to raise millions from it. I think he made 80 grand from doing an NFT. So what we could do is, obviously it's about how much people are willing to buy it. It's not like... You can't just be like, Adam's going to knock out five NFTs today. <laughs> but we could clip out you doing the one-man band and being like, that's going to be our new... We're going to sell that as an NFT. So it's almost like a collector's item. It would still be in the episode, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, You yeah. don't have to pull it from the internet. Yeah, like the Mona Lisa would still exist in the gallery, but you'd own it, but you can't have it, but it's yours. But the but what Harry said is like, oh, Charlie bit my fingers. Like, it's off that? YouTube. Exactly. But it's, it's ridiculous. But NFTs don't disappear, like... No, it's been taken off just while it's getting sold. Just for right. whatever. It'll go back up. Yeah. Because the owner, the person whose channel it is, still owns it. So that's my thing about NFTs. And I, I would love someone to explain, like, Bitcoin to me. Because I don't understand what Bitcoin is. And I've Bitcoin's got a bit... Bitcoin's machine money. Yeah. That's money in that. It's decentralized. So it's not controlled by any banks or nations. I get... Right. Absolutely fine. I don't know how they mine for it. I don't understand that. Anyway. But how... If you've got an... Say we do that thing of, like... Adam doing the fucking triangle and be like, we clip that out and that's an NFT. Just what does the person who spends, say we sell that for 10 grand, that it's person cheap. owns that a of NFT. What does that gain the person that's buying a non-fungible token? The kudos of like, yeah. I've brought Adam being a one-man band. Yeah, but like, have you seen Charlie with my finger? Yeah, I own that for deal. Right. Like, that's it. You don't get, you don't get any monetization from it. You're just like, yeah, I own that. Yeah. Or like the Doge meme, I own, I own, that's mine. Yeah. Especially just rich people just finding something else to fucking spend the money on. It makes me want to join Al Qaeda. That's how. <laughs> that's how annoying it is. I like. I think. Oh, it's, but you're basically I've buying the receipt death to the West. You're buying the receipts or something, but you don't own the yeah, thing. I want to join Al Qaeda just after he gets. No, but I mean, it's, it's, is that blockbusters? Does that not make you feel like what is? How far have we come in terms of like civilization that we're like? Yeah, you know that clip that people can still see and is still part of another thing. Yeah, you now own that, and we've called it an NFT. Like, what kind of, like, how is that something that, and maybe it's because I'm not super wealthy, but I just like, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Just leave it on YouTube and watch it's it. It's bragging, isn't it? Right. Just, What's the question? What do you think about NFTs? Uh, no, we didn't get to the question. Two questions. If you could own any form of media privately to stop anyone else from seeing it, what would it be? So you can stop people seeing and it. And if you could privatise a highlight from Have A Word episode to sell as an NFT to a rich fella, what clip would you sell for that for most money? Robot Wars, because it's the one that could get us in the most trouble. Right. Um, but then they then control it. Yeah. They can put it where they want then. Yeah. Yeah, so you own the digital ledger called a blockchain that certifies the digital asset <laughs> to be unique. So you own the digital certificate or something. Essentially, yeah, like you saying the receipt. Yeah, you don't own it. You don't. You can't. You don't hide it. I can't get me a drowned there. It, it's it's in it's insane. But it, I mean, there's two things. Validly, we are knocking out sort of the sort of stuff that gets made into NFTs. I would like to own um, Jar Rule. <laughs> that Jar Rule moment when you got annoyed because you're like, that wasn't that fucking bad. 
Now I see him from the office. I love the office, so I'd like to. I'd like to buy like a scene from the office. Right, American oil. The UK British. office. Yeah, okay. I'd like to buy the scene from Two Pints Lager and a pack of crisps where Gaz tries to adopt a kid. <laughs> I reckon you're good for about twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone might sell you that pretty easily. If you rang up the producers, they'd be like, "Yeah, no one's bothered. You can have it for." I I think it's crazy. Can we just make ourselves a little promise that if this podcast does incredibly well, we're not sat here one day just going, "Lad." Gotta see me new NFT. It's fucking amazing. It's shit hot. I would like. You could buy Tracy Emin's bed, but I'd have to not have any access to it. Could I buy a bed and make it? <gasps> and that'd be That's another statement. Comment. That'd be a statement. Yeah. The world's changing. Anyone yeah. can anyone can get over adversity. Just make your bed. Step yeah. one. Why don't we just do this anyway? We don't even need you it. A bed. Buy Tracy Emin's bed in an art gallery and just. You use it instead of a hotel when you're in London gigging. Yes. Yeah. As long as you stay in it three times, you're probably making money back. <laughs> <laughs> London hotel prices. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, none of us know what we're fucking on about when it comes to NFTs, but London's expensive for hotels. One more question. No. Yeah. yeah. Um. Would you fuck a pig? <laughs> <laughs> Janet says, "Hi, I'm a bit tipsy Janet. in a club." <laughs> huh? Janet, Janet, Janet. Dirty slag from the last episode. It was from the uh, Patreon. Patreon, oh, Patreon exclusive this week was very good. patreoncom slash have a word pod. Loads of extra content coming soon as well. Get the entire back catalog. Get the entire back catalog we've ever done. Uh, the entire back catalog, all of them. There's hundreds. Three lockdown lock-ins, a quiz, and this month the ghost hunt. Ghost hunt, and next month another lock-in. And also, there's a video, it's quite hard to find this one, where we caught Finn shagging that couch. Yeah. And that's an NFT, I think. Is that it? Should just call it an NFT. <laughs> Finn fucked a what? The couch. You on laughing gas after you've fucked your arm should be an NFT. Yeah. Genuinely, that could be an NFT. Yeah, because it's not public, because it's behind the paywall anyway. So it's not widely known. Yeah. Someone could own the URL to that and privatise and keep yeah. it. It's not that funny, though, but hotel prices in London are expensive. Anyway. Uh, Janet, who is not a prostitute from real. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. Do you know for sure? Yeah. How do you know? Because I know which Janet is. Oh, okay. She's a long time listener of the podcast. And right. I follow her on Instagram. And you know she hasn't moved very recently <laughs> and got into a new career. Well, if she has moved to real to become a sex worker, she's kept it off her Instagram. She, you probably would though, wouldn't you? Yeah. The moving to real bit more than the other bit. <laughs> So by that rationale, everyone on Instagram could be a prostitute in real. Why? How do you know they're not? <laughs> NFT, hotel, finger blank. <laughs> I've lost my mind. <laughs> Janet says, hi, I'm a bit tipsy in a comedy club in London. Not the hot water, not hot water as that was fully booked. No prizes so for guessing well. which one. Was an okay night. Nigel was boss. What is your thoughts on him? Heard a few. London. No. In the Liverpool. Oh. I thought you said London. You did, did say, you did London. say London. But it says Liverpool. Oh, you sorry. You it wrong. See now. <laughs> Just cut that out. Yeah, yeah you're going to cut gone. that out. I'll give, I'll give you a clean cut. Fuck no. you, Finn. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not cutting it out. Uh, that was the joke. I, know, I knew he wasn't cutting it out. I was doing another joke. I didn't like your joke. <laughs> You sound like Tommy Cooper when you do that. <laughs> you, you look like Tommy Cooper. <laughs> I don't think we should do this question. <laughs> Can we just fuck this question? By the up? way, the next section with Sean is one of the best. <laughs> yeah, but we've not finished this section, so it looks like, listen, this one's gone in the ground. <laughs> yeah. this look at him. This one's gone in the ground. It honestly looks like I've just read a question from Janet just to say she might be a sex worker in real. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit tipsy in a comedy club in London. Liverpool, London. And then we've not, we've got to... It's going to be a great section, the next one, isn't it? It is. It was filmed uh, in the just past. That. It was filmed in the past. We know it's amazing. Again? Just that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking spanner. This section is done. <laughs> 
cooked. Oh, one more. Come this on. cut, this, this, the end of the section smells worse than Adam's fingers. It Come is on. fucking. What's the question? It's. Uh, you gotta ask the question. No, I don't. I'll ask a question then. All right, cool. Okay. Is it from Janet from Real? Let me just find one. Um, I'd love to bang this off. That would be really, really not fair. Not fair? Why? Because you've done all this prep. <laughs> this is Adam's prep. Would you rather fuck a pig <laughs> or not fuck a pig? It's literally the made-up question that I did on the Patreon episode on Monday. It's good. It's good, the second half with Sean, isn't it? It's really good. It's really good. The second half with Sean is worth sitting through the last 40 minutes that he's had through. 40? Do you think that was not good? I just thought the last the six, past six well, minutes were a bit mental. Comes to tell them we filmed it in the past. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, this bit was Sean. We filmed two weeks ago when Sean was here. And he's not here now. So we couldn't do it now. So we did it then. We have to do that because if the it, like Sean's an amazing comedian. He was up gigging. So we just took the opportunity to get him in. We've recorded the first section today. In that time, we've had a little update of the lighting. So if things look a little different, as in Adam is wearing different clothes, I am slightly fatter. It's because the second section was recorded two weeks ago. Is one of my favourite guest sections we've ever done. And that's me saying that. I loved it. If the lighting's a slightly bit different, it's just because we've had an update of the lighting. Enjoy it. But does money come Bye. first, obviously? Because that's what we do. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't believe in the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaredpod.com. Does the it's show on. get in trouble? <laughs> How often does the show get in trouble? <laughs> Surprisingly, once over the past year and a half. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, we've yeah. had a few whinges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nothing yeah. like, you know, we're going to fucking end you. We've had one of them. Yeah, we've had one. We'll, we will end your career, but... Um, I've had one of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Sean Walsh, to Have A Word. Uh, you, man. you mentioned before we started there that we should get Paul Chow, John. And I asked, do you know the Comedy Store story? Which... We told this ages ago, and the comic it's about asked us to take it out because we named them, so we're not going to do that. But so Paul Ch Ch challenges now for Adam to tell this story <laughs> without naming that comic. It's going to be like, uh, and, and yeah, will uh, and will everyone else that knows the comic know who you're talking about? Uh, yeah, that's not no, important. that's not important. No. Okay, right, right, fine. So right, so Chowdhury was on at the store, right? Yeah, and uh, he's he's doubling and trebling with every other club in London doing ten gigs. Right. So the compare of the comedy store for that night is talking to the open spot, who happens to be another Asian comic. So this is before Chowdhury is going on. Little does you know, Chowdhury's at the back of the gig, right? So the compare goes, the most important thing at the comedy store is your opening line. You've got to nail your opening line. If you do that, you'll get them. You'll have Don on side. You'll be in at the store. And then this open spot did his first head shitting himself. So the compare goes to him, you should go on and say, what's happening, white people? Right, <laughs> which has been Paul Chowdhury's opener since 1973, <laughs> and it's a funny fucking. <laughs> What's that mean, white people? And a lot of white people go. <laughs> we are. Say, you know what goes on. What's happening, white people? Levels the place as one of the best open spots the store's seen in 15, 20 years, and he comes back into the green room to be like. I've nailed it! And he's just greasing with Paul Chowdhury going, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's my line! And the compere just comes and fucking snakes out the room. Just left oh. just hand grenade and fucked off. <laughs> Never trust a cunt comic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you knew I. you? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favourite. Favourite stories. How are you? I'm good. Yeah? Nice trip. Run Sorry cool. that you've got Finn's cup. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. You washed it. <laughs> Yeah, you washed it. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah, always watch stuff, yeah. <laughs> Is this one of your first trips out of the smoke post, you know, Rona? Yes. Yeah. Masks on train. 
Uh, that, that, Jumpers for goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that was one bit. I, you know, and the carriage, because I, 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 I upgraded. Sure. Yeah. On. Hey. Uh, <laughs> but on on the right side of the carriage, it's single file, and on the left side of the carriage is the tables in first class. In, well, actually, it was no. What's there's a new there's a new one now, which is premium. There's one in on between. trains. Yeah, there's one in between. There's a business class, on which trains. is which is like for it's first class, but without the trolley. Right, so you right. don't get the food; so you, you just, just get, get the space. They the might as well call chair. that. Yes, they yeah, might yeah. as well call that scum treating themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, perfect. <laughs> first is 189. Don't worry about it. It's our fucking honeymoon. <laughs> 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 it's a London. Can't go abroad. It's you know what's really funny? You sort of checked yourself then when you told us that you'd upgraded, which is such a comic thing to do. And comics can never be seen to be living. An affluent life. Like I remember I yes. mentioned on this thing a couple no, of weeks ago yes. and on stage that I've I've had a I've got a cleaner who comes every two weeks because I'm a messy cunt and she comes and just makes the house not messy. Yeah. It takes about two weeks for me to destroy it again and then yes. she fixes it again. And I mentioned it on stage, I just felt the whole audience go, What? <laughs> the fuck I know, you? you've gotta be doing all right. But it's oh, it is embarrassing. Like I yeah. but it was I mean it, it was it was it was twenty five pounds. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah, is that all right? All right. Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I had work to do. <laughs> okay. We are the southerner in the north going, I'm not a Tory. I'm not a Tory. I just wanted slightly more leg room. Yeah. <laughs> it was only 25 pounds. Um, yeah, well, actually, actually, do you know what happened? No, I did go into, no, no, no. I went into the standard class yeah. carriage uh -huh. and I went to sit down. But they, they hadn't, you know, there's the electric signs that let you know if the, the seating is available or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They weren't working. So I went to sit down, but then it turned out I was in someone else's seat. And if you know me at all, you know that I, I cannot handle that, this sort of awkwardness that I go into full panic mode. And I just thought, I can't handle this. I'm, I'm going to pay the 25 pounds and go and sit in the, the premium bit. So I did try. Which is your social anxiety, not like, I just had to talk to a poor person. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, oh, it's God my seat, yeah. <laughs> Quickly, yeah. take my money. No, 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 absolutely. So yeah, 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 social anxiety, not not had to talk Amazing. to a poor, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Were you actually in someone else's seat? Yes. Definitely. I once, um, was it? Uh, I've once sat in Nicholas Cage's seat by mistake. Oh, <laughs> I always do that. Wow. Yeah. So I common. Mean, yeah. Is right. that the end of this? Are you going to? Are you going to elaborate? Or well, I, I again, it's, I, I'm mentioning. Hang on. Was this class. on a train from London to Runcorn? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He, he's desperate to do this. He's waiting outside. <laughs> he's just constantly on the yeah. train. Was it like the Con Air scene where I wish you'd put the bonnet in the box because that's how it feels like it is in my head. Um, Please let it be that. No, no. I just I I I got on the plane. And I thought, I'm going to sit in the first class seat and I'm going to check how much it is to upgrade. And then it turned out I was sitting in Nicolas Cage's seat, so I just went and sat in my seat in standard. Train or plane? <laughs> plane. 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 Right. What's happening now? I, Have I done something wrong again? No, but I just, <laughs> oh, I don't know no. that's how planes work. Like, I'm going to sit here. No, I know. And then someone's going to come <laughs> around and go, uh, tickets, please. Can I do an upgrade? I know. No, it's I know. no, I know. I, I know. I just, I know. I just thought I would check. I was like, I'll try. I'll sit here. I was Nicholas Cage. I'm going to go and sit in my seat at the back. And the fucking captain's going to get his machine out. Well, I'm going to fucking cash in a little yeah. bit more of this. Just sat next tickets. to the pilot. Is it all right? Is anyone sitting here? Can I sit? You don't mind if I... Can I upgrade it to co-pilot, please? How much is the co-pilot Can I upgrade? sit in the front? <laughs> like on a bus. How much is it to drive the plane? How much? I'll pay whatever it takes. Where was that going to? Where were you going to with Nicolas Cage? I was... <laughs> I was going home. I was going home from America somewhere. Right. Uh, uh, what's the other thing? No. Was there another thing? <laughs> there wasn't another thing. I keep getting confused. I don't know. Maybe it's lockdown, but I keep having thoughts, which we normally have yeah. uh, as human beings. And then I'm mistaking thoughts with something I was going to say. So I wasn't actually going to say anything. <laughs> we I was, do that. I was just thinking. All the time. Yes. <laughs> and the time, you know, it's a worry when Adam's looking at me going, dude, <laughs> these are on. I'm like, oh, yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Shit. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what did Nicolas Cage <laughs> say to you? And how did Because if Nicolas Cage went to me, you're in my seat. No. I think what I'd say is, you're Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That doesn't change anything, sir. <laughs> No, I, 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 no, I, I instigated the uh, dialogue because uh, he did the thing, you know, where you you look at your seat and and the, but there's someone in it, so you look at the number and you look at the ticket, and he did that, and I, 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 I think I'm probably in your seat, <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> Sorry, he's like it's alright, and I, I got, I got up, I, what was I thinking? <laughs> Sat the first part. He who know. dares, he who dares. I, I once, I once um, bumped into Princess Diana. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm, built, I'm calling the bullshit bell. No. I don't believe you. No, 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 no. When I was a, a child, right? Um, Checks out. Child. Obviously, Checks out. <laughs> last week. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I was on a plane yeah, just yeah. recently. I was in an airport. Right. And all my stories are transport based, by the way. They, 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 <laughs> they, they don't take place outside train stations or, or, or You're transport. You're a comic. All we do is travel and yes, talk. Yes, I suppose. This, I was a child and me and my brother were playing It. And uh, it. I think my brother, It. Oh, do you call it something else tick. up here? Tick, we say, don't we? Tick. Tick. So I you touch and say tick. Yeah, yeah, tick. Tick, tick, tick where it. I'm from. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That, that game has really traveled, hasn't it? I'm impressed and it's TIG. You go about 25 miles to Liverpool, it's TIG. Yeah. And by the time you get to Brighton, it's it. it. You're tag it. Well. Yes. Tag. Tag, tag or tag, yeah. Yeah. In North Wales. Off, off ground TIG as well. Oh. But if you're off ground, you what? can't be ticked. What? Yeah. Off ground TIG. How yeah. does that work? So you climb up a tree. Yeah. 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 If oh. you climb up a tree, then you can come and slap me, but it doesn't count. Or Scare, on a car. Scarecrow TIG. What's Stuff that? In the mud. You stand there with your legs open and Stuff. you can be released by one of the other players who's not been ticked. That doesn't, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. A scarecrow is... Legs Called are shut. Stuck in the mud. Yeah. Stuck in uh, the mud. Well, yeah. Scarecrow's legs are shut. Can't tig your butcher. What? what? Can't tig your butcher. What, what's happening? If you... <laughs> if you can't tig your butcher... These are official rules. West Lancashire rules. Why was the butcher playing? Tick the butcher is the person who's just got you. Yeah. You can't then get oh, them no back. Tick backs. Oh, no Oh. So it's a no tick backs. Yeah. Why mine was mine made me sound ninety eight. Can't take your butcher. <laughs> oh, we'd say touch black no backs, wouldn't we, or something? Touch black no backs. Touch, touch black no backs. Yeah, if you like a black t shirt on, you get like got away with it. Oh, cool. It's I about, can't it's believe about I said clothing. I bumped into Princess Diana. We're talking about tugging butcher. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but Sean, I bumped, I bumped into the, the Queen of Hearts or whatever, and we'll you're going to tuggy, tuggy oh, butcher. Can't take, can't take your butcher. <laughs> sorry, the princess Lady D. Lady D. Yes. <laughs> Uh, back in the news. So this is topical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As if you ever need to qualify a lady and Princess Diana story. <laughs> Fucking hell, Sean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, waiting I said, years, I said, <laughs> been waiting years <laughs> to <laughs> tell the story of Bumper into Princess Diana. I, I'm actually the guy that leaked the Bashir documents. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I Hasn't can Hasn't written new this. stuff in fucking months. But I'm gonna have to get that Princess Die story out somehow. Here we go. Before I was bumped into Princess. Right, okay. It's uh, hard to bump into a princess. Yes, yeah. you would think. Yeah. Mm. But not if you're a child mm. playing It in Gatwick Airport. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I don't know what you're, this is true. And why would I make, this would be a No, I do. I do believe you, but and it's we just, just so just, mental. I know, and we and my brother just was chasing me, and and there were there weren't many. I think there were two guards, Harry and William were there, and they didn't do anything. They and didn't I, join in. No, didn't join in, no. and I, I ran into her, and mm. it was and it was absolutely fine, and everyone was sort of laughing. I think she she laughed. Got my first laugh actually off Princess. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that then. was when I knew. That was when I knew. This is what you I know. have to do. How old were you, roughly? Uh, uh, it's 10. So did you know? Fucking hell, that's Princess Diana. When like, are we talking, like mid-90s? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Why, what are you... No, I just... <laughs> Do you what? remember how she smelt? What? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, that's mad, that love. Oh, if I was a 10-year-old, I'd sniff Princess Diana. But... Well, would you? No one's ever said That'd that. That'd be your first thought. I don't know. Let's get a whiff of this for... A podcast in 20 well, she, years. Do you time. remember her as really tall? I, I remember her as wearing white. Right. Do you, what, what What was I meant to say there? I, do, I just, don't know. The, look, I've told, to be honest with you, 
I've given you all the details I can remember. <laughs> like I was 10. It was a long time ago. Did you I know it was to, Princess Diana? I've Love. told you all the people that were there. Did I? No. Well, no, there were, there was, so, it, I remember, you know, it was like Sean get hit. My mum calling me away, laugh thing. You know what? What have I told you about running the, into Princess Diana? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. For the last day. Yeah. So that, yeah. Then, so that's it. That's all I, that's, that's it. That's all I remember. I'm sorry. Is, have you got any other celebrity stories or is just Nicolas Cage and Princess Diana uh, and the most unlikely couple? I once asked Andrew Garfield for a <laughs> selfie and he said no. <laughs> uh, How did he smell? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, yeah, he walked past on Wardour Street and I got, I got my phone ready and um, and I got it ready because I didn't want to hassle him, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it wasn't particularly busy. And I went up and I said, oh, "Sorry, Andrew, I, I loved you in Spider Man." It was just sort of quite soon after the release of the Amazing Spider Man. I loved you in Spider Man. So I had to get a quick quick selfie, and he um, he said, "Oh no, sorry, I'm in a rush," uh, and then and then just sort of slowly <laughs> ambled off. <laughs> 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 I couldn't possibly. <laughs> as he stands I'm there in waiting. such a hurry. Have you ever said no? Because I imagine you get stopped sometimes as for selfies and stuff. Sometimes, uh, no, no, uh, no. I do. I don't. I no, uh, maybe. I don't like. Oh yeah, it doesn't really count. But you know, if people go, oh, my friend says you're famous, and I, you know, you don't really know what to say to that, and then they get, they don't know who you are. Then they go, can I have a selfie? And you go, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even cut. know who I am. What are you? talking about yeah, yeah. the I third in a queue for selfies who's yeah. like i don't know but there's a queue in there <laughs> yeah exactly no. have you seen those videos where like non-famous people go to like a mall in america and they take like six people with them and they get those six people to come up to them and ask for the picture and then nobody and then the whole of the mall just starts asking for pictures even though no one knows does that happen? really happen uh, yeah, it, they, it, like a stunt they'll get people go oh my god it's you can i get a picture can i get a picture and then what? six of them will take a picture and then there's just a queue of people who've got no idea who this is meant to be getting photos i once uh was on the way home from college with some friends and we, i don't remember why we decided to do this but we decided to all run at separate times stop at the same point which was near a bus stop and look up above the building across the road as if something remarkable was happening <laughs> and then everyone else started joining in and trying to look for this thing that we were all looking at <laughs> <laughs> that was fun i already love your mates from college <laughs> yeah like this is what we do I know. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of kids get pissed and try and bang girls not sean and the crew <laughs> They're doing high japes at bus stops. <laughs> We're doing hidden camera yeah. without the camera. <laughs> oh, really me. well hidden camera. Yeah. You, you'd have been so good on TikTok. You were just 20 years too early. <laughs> have you? Because oh, I watched a lot of your um, your videos the start of lockdown when you were doing the calls with your agents and stuff. Oh, yeah. Have you been living on your own? No, uh, I did for lockdown. I did for lockdown one. Yeah. And then the uh, girlfriend... Can you say the girlfriend? Yeah. You can say that? Yeah. God, I get so scared. I was Why like, the girlfriend? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's okay. You wow. can on here, definitely. We can say that. You can say the girlfriend yeah. on here. Yeah. Uh, my have you, girlfriend. Have you worked with Adam before? <laughs> <laughs> can I say the girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it up. I just get petrified about it. No, yes. So, uh, and then, uh, so she moved in for number two and number three. Yeah. So, that, so there you are. So yes, I was one on, on my own. Yeah. It was very nice. I enjoyed it. Did you? I loved lockdown. Really? I absolutely. I had a wonderful time. Really? Did I you was. not? Social anxiety taken away, isn't it? Social anxiety taken away. You don't really have to do anything that you don't... Life is just full of having to go places and waiting, <laughs> which is awful. <laughs> <laughs> That's what life is. It's just wait. I was on a train waiting to come here. Now I'm here. We're waiting for this to end. Then, <laughs> then I'll have to wait for the gig. And then we'll be at the green. We're waiting to go on. And I'll be waiting for you, you to finish. It's just waiting. It's just, oh, fuck. This is it. Uh, but in lockdown, it's just it's lovely. Life and, has stopped. And, and normally in life, if you just stay at home and sit on the couch and don't do anything, you get like an anxiety about not doing stuff. You're like, God, I really should be going and doing stuff. I didn't get that. All right. No, but I mean, in a lockdown, you can't. It was all no, taken exactly. away. Well, yeah. Precisely. So in normal it's life, not... you're like, oh, fuck, I'm being a lazy cunt. 
But you could. My sister said that her and her partner didn't argue for three months, and they like have amazing bennies sometimes over nothing. But like a lot of the stress that they have yeah. is we've got to get the kids ready for this, uh, and it's that time, and yeah. then and you take that away, and we're like, she was like, yeah, we're getting on really well because they weren't fight right, like racing the clock to get the kids out to fucking judo or some shit. Yes. I mean, what, 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 what I don't, what I sort of don't understand is, and I've not really spoken to anyone that has this view, but you, I get the idea that, like, what, what, what was it that people were missing that they loved about their lives so much? <laughs> what, what, what were they? Dower take. That no, I can, but it's well, not. I can relate take, to it as but, well. No, but I don't. But I, what, what, like, okay, we've got the pub. I get it. The yeah. right. So t- take the pub out of the equation. Yeah. Then what? Like, what's all the fuss about? Uh, I would also take out the financial pressures. Yeah. That 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 was that was that was, that's scary. Uh, like, seeing friends, human contact. It, what do you see? That's just such nonsense. <laughs> what do you want to see your friend for if it's not at the pub? Oh, honestly, have you ever met a friend not at the pub? It's just awkward. <laughs> see what, what? What is there to talk about? Uh, you meet you know, if you meet a friend for a coffee, that is not awkward for about one coffee, and then you've run out of stuff to say because you're sober. It's there's no point. And slightly more touchy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What about playing football with your mates? Yeah, that would. If I played football, I would miss that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Right. Uh, I like the cinema, but I mean it's all right. I've got some films. Get a bigger TV. I've got delivered t- by Amazon. Delivered by Amazon. You've got fine. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We could. I could live with that. That's all right. Yeah. What? I mean, what now? What about the, what? the smell of fresh air on a summer's day? You're allowed. <laughs> you're allowed. <laughs> Open what your fucking the window. Fuck? Classic twenty-nine-year-old scouse lad. There. What about the uh, <laughs> the gentle mist of a spring morning as you're? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> that was you. That was like definitely not your life. Fucking hell! I tell you, I need to get out of this roller. I really miss the smell of a sweet scented spring morning. Why don't you do it in the garden? Full of fucking bin bags. That cleaning lady, the lazy old bitch, hasn't been round because of the roller. <laughs> oh my god! What about? Sh- well, God, you can't think of anything. Banging other. Just, I felt. I, I felt like I the single people. There are loads. Of what shagging? Like going on dates. If you if you were single, it wasn't that long, was it? No, mean, a year. No, but no, we like, were allowed out. There were bits where we were allowed out. Lockdown and, one was basically two months, wasn't it? And then it started easing up a bit. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely think of anything else. The are you silence. allowed to shag? No. Are you oh. allowed to shag strangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. What? Are you allowed to have sex with strangers? You can only shag I've been allowed to have sex since I was 16, <laughs> thank you very much. You're allowed to fuck other people as long as everyone doing it is from a maximum of three households. And you, you can't, can't have, have a gang bang. people in a gangbang at the minute. Yeah. It's legal to have a gangbang right now. It's legal. <laughs> as long as there's less than six people. No, it's from illegal less to have right, a proper it. gangbang. Yeah. That's Unless you're at work, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're looking for Patreon yeah. content. We're yeah. doing a ghost hunt. If Let's do a gangbang. Paid, it's yeah. fine. But obviously, <coughs> prostitution is illegal, so you also have to film it. Prostitution's what? Illegal. Oh, illegal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hang on, I thought it was illegal. Oh, I mean, yeah. it is illegal. You're yeah. in Runcorn now, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah. Can you think of anything? Because it sort of pissed me off how right he is. What did... What? Gig, yeah. What Live gigs? entertainment. Music. Music. Yeah, but, I mean, it was going to come back. Yeah, but you said, what did you miss? Why did you hate it? How often you did you go to that? music gigs? Very regularly. I, I was going oh. on a weekly basis. Yeah. Oh, all right, fair. I, yeah. I mean, I don't. Did you not miss performing? <laughs> we would perform again, I believed. Yeah. <laughs> I believed we would perform again. Yeah, but so you in which when case, you couldn't. No, because we would again. You could, but it's what Dan said. You couldn't. So it didn't, it wasn't to, to, due to my health or anything. I will gig again. That's coming. Not entirely sure when. But it's it's down the line, so let's enjoy ourselves. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a, uh, a I did a wait, child sorry, and a mortgage Dan, freaked me so, out. That's what freaked yes. me out because I was like, yes. oh shit, when though? Because I didn't know we were going to get government assistance, and I didn't know me and him talking to each other via Zoom every afternoon was going to start being profitable that quickly. For the first couple of weeks, I was shitting it. That stuff's scary. Yeah. That stuff's really scary. But like you said, I've noticed since gigging again, 
and I'd be interested in, in knowing your thoughts on this, but I, I, I have the, the what, what was the word you used about the coffee? Techie. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I've got a gig tonight and I'm just not quite relaxed. I'm just a bit, there's a gig and I feel a bit anxious, a slight despair, fear and dread of this is going to go horribly wrong. How long have you been doing it? 15 years yeah. and you've regressed to open spot level of like, <laughs> I think it's going to be bad and I'm touchy. And like, I always feel, oh, that's right, yeah. how I feel oh, every right. time. Look, this well, gig is lovely all. and if it goes no. badly at all, it's entirely your fault. <laughs> yeah. If that makes you feel any better. Yes, it does. It does. Uh, yeah. I'm the opposite. Oh, I've, how I've, wonderful. I've come back with an attitude of, oh. I don't care what anyone in the room thinks as long as I'm having fun. Like, oh, I wish but you I had that. pined for gigs. Like I've yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. it at the point where that first lockdown hit. I started gigging in 2002 and I had hadn't had more than two and a half, three weeks off for my whole career. And I enjoyed a bit of a break. The fear was like, holy fuck money. When are we going to get back? Yeah, but I was enjoying like, oh my God, I put Etta to bed every night. And like, this was the, the first time I've been able to do that. You were pining for a gig quicker than me and then it hit with me it took me about a, a month um, and i was like because we talked about stand-up and i started really missing it but you were like 10 days two weeks going god oh, funny like get back to gigging yeah uh I maybe that has a big the same on. bird um tweeting yeah you can't call her that anymore <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> uh at like 5 a.m when it was sunny, do you remember the sun was amazing? What life should be like quiet birds singing. That was my alarm. <laughs> and I would get up, it was lovely. Is it a penguin? Well, I can't, What's can't. happened to that bird now? Is it like the bird got the rona? Uh, Cherry Pepsi Max out the fridge, please. Just whenever you oh get a God. Yeah, I'm thirsty. Um, I don't know if I've brought the right vibe. You oh, have. Absolutely. You have. You just bring your own vibe. I yeah. can't, I just love we the can. idea of the whole world having a fucking collective panic attack and you being like, good, <laughs> good. I like the Tiger King and I want to watch it. Oh, twice. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, good. That's a great coping mechanism. I when, when, the, when it all booted off again in November, New Year, I said to myself, I'm not going to get flapped this time. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, that's what, the, the thing I wish I'd done is, is what you've done. When it kicked off and it was bad, go, this is temporary. Yep. I got wound up that it that it was just the 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 foundations have been pulled out from under me. I wish I could go back and go. You're going to be all right. It's going to be fine. But that's easy, isn't it? With hindsight, in January it was a bit more chilled out. Yeah, I think it didn't help for me that it was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. Do you know what I mean? I thought it was good. when like Europe was locked down and we were like, oh, are we gonna? I kept saying to you, we're not gonna. And if we do, be four days and then be fine. And then it wasn't. And I think that was the problem for me. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I'm a, I was hopelessly optimistic, very naively. And then when it was shite, I was like, oh, this is shite. That's gone now, hasn't it? That optimism. Uh, from Adam or the I mean from globe? Adam, I mean from the globe, definitely. I mean yes. from, definitely from you. Yeah, I just like- Well, it went in, it, the, the lockdown 3.0, it definitely went. Yeah, it just pissed me off. Yeah. Having this was amazing. What did you do? Did you do anything? Did you do some right? What have you- you, did you just have a little like break from it, and now you're back? Or because we threw ourselves into this, this was this was our little. It's amazing. I I no, I wrote I wrote a lot. I, I did nothing for lockdown one, and then lo and lockdown three. Yeah, I did. I I I wrote a lot. I wrote a sitcom. You think you wrote a sitcom? <laughs> it's been a year, hasn't it? So yeah, yeah I wrote a sitcom in episode in, in episode one in, <laughs> in, in lockdown. <laughs> Oh God! Is it a, a, a sitcom for you? Are you gonna in your head? Are you the lead? Yes, in my head, I, I, I'm the lead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not gonna get made or anything. But it's it, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote it. It was nice to see. I like. I still am a very optimistic person, and if I'm writing a sitcom, in my head, it's already been commissioned. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that's how this happens, isn't it? That's how that's you. That's what's it called? Um, what's it called when you? You see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Visualize. Yeah. The manifestation. Manifestation. And and you and it and, and it happens. I yeah. don't I don't have that. I just go, it's 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 not gonna happen. There's no way. <laughs> I just don't know how you can have the commitment to write an entire sitcom while constantly thinking no one's gonna make this. 
I, I would not get what, past what's the sentence three if I thought there was any possibility that it wasn't going to get made. Because you can't let the idea that it's not going to get made stop you from doing the thing that you love. Yeah. Which is 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 making things. So I, I've look, I've done the hard bit. I've written it. I can't do anything about getting it made. Don't I can't. We make it. We make it? Yeah. You could produce it, like. Could you yeah. produce the sitcom? Oh, Adam, got, in his speak. mind, can do anything Adam, he bloody well wants. It's I play a sort of uh, alcoholic, yep. dis- dysfunctional uh, <laughs> um, uh, d- d- therapist. Who, yeah. Who's who's um, completely in, in co- actually he's quite a good therapist, but it's his own personal life that that drips into uh, into his work and and makes his work life and his personal life extremely chaotic. I like that idea. Yeah, can we can you imagine if we made it produce- and then offered it to Alfie Brown? How much of a <laughs> fucking kicker that be? Sean, we've really got someone else in mind for this. <laughs> we, we we've already got a couch therapist. There we couches. go. Yes, perfect. <laughs> There we go, you got one of the props. Right. How, nah, how to win over a script writer. <laughs> well, we've already got a couch. We're halfway there. I don't want to waste money on fucking props. We've got three cameras, we've got a second studio. I reckon we're good to go. Oh, God. And you did a podcast with Paul McCaffrey. Oh, I did a podcast with Paul. Has Paul been on this yet? No. Oh, no. Not yet. What a man. What, what a what man. What a beautiful man, Paul Just McCaffrey had a baby. Has, Has he? he? Yes. At his age. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he has. Hi, Paul. Love being a cunt. <laughs> yes, he's yeah. one of my favourite people in comedy. Yes, but that wonderful. Was, yeah, he's wonderful. Up in a couple man. of weeks to do Hot Wars Comedy Club with me and with you. Yes, that will be fun. Yeah. Where are you? So I don't know. I'm doing less gigs than I used to, but probably just gigging. I didn't know whether I was. I'm going to say this, and I didn't know whether I was going to. I was like, should I say this? Would it be awkward? But, but it's like it's it's no disrespect to you because remember I'm in the room as well. Yeah. So I. But you're one of the best comedians I've ever seen live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you don't mind if I? No, 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 no. You're fantastic. Yeah. But when I start, when I was, well, I was new when I saw you. Remember, I always tell you about this when you you opened Comedia in Brighton, in Brighton, and absolutely annihilated it. I just, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was sat stage right, and it was like, what the fuck is? Yeah. It was just, it, it didn't. Stop! It, it it was just relentless, and that was the gig where Reg was closing. Do you remember this? I told you about this. Yeah, <laughs> Reginald. T. Were you on in the middle? No, I was just there you to would... watch. Okay. And Reginald, I don't even know if I'd start. I might have started actually, but uh, I was there to watch. And and Reg was closing, and <laughs> he's he's doing his set, and this girl was absolutely paralytic in the front row. And all you could hear in between the silences was her going, please, please, fuck me. (laughs) (laughs) Please, please, please. And it was making his gig really, I mean, the crowd, we're, we're really laughing at it, but obviously it's making his job quite difficult. And he's trying to carry on. He's trying to persist was through this. Was uh, Reginald D. Hunter yeah, to fuck out? Right, yeah, yeah, right, right. It wasn't someone else wait, on the wait, table. Wait, listen, no, it was Reginald D. Hunter. He's trying to go through the set. And this really happened. <laughs> and suddenly, it's sort of forgotten about her. And you just see her legs. It's <laughs> 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 above everyone's head. <laughs> He just had Reg and then these legs like that going, I remember. <laughs> Fuck me. And do you want the absolute topper for this story? I know what the topper is. He did. Nope. That was Lou Conran. No. Fuck off. I got her a free ticket because we were mates. <laughs> no. Right. She'd moved back to Brighton because her parents are from Sussex. Right. Right. And she was like, yeah, I'll come down. She got steaming with a mate. They stupidly put a fucking, at the time, amateur comedian on the front row. She got pie-eyed, started doing all that. And I never admitted to Reg that I knew her. (laughs) Absolutely not. Lou Conran, ladies and gents, pulled her legs up in the air and Go on, Reg! (laughs) Was absolutely (laughs) shit. It was unbelievable. Fucking mortified. I was like, I'm just not saying a fucking thing. 
Oh my day! When I remember you it so well. Dad, did you know it was Lou Conrad? I knew that. Da- I don't know. I don't know who that is. I don't okay. think, but I knew that Dan knew her. Yeah. So Lou Conrad oh, is, no. you know, <coughs> she's a brilliant comic. And I, I do. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you probably you work with her or whatever. But yes. Yeah, she is. She's been on the couch, <laughs> like doing really well. But uh, <laughs> whoa, that was a <laughs> that was an early moment. <laughs> Uh, fucking brilliant. <sighs> well, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that. You've said that. A couple... It's funny, isn't it? When you, when you're starting out, cause to, to like when you're starting out and you're new, it, it's like you're a sponge and it's, you're, you just soak up everything. And yeah. those first comics that you see that for whatever reason, just stick in your mind. It's after like five years that happens less and less. Totally. But when you're new, you're like, What? <laughs> no, wow. but I saw you wow. again. We did some weird festival. There's hardly anyone there. I did, do you remember it? It was like a few years ago. Uh, Andrew Bird was there, and it, and uh, again, again, you know that it's not just uh, nostalgia. I've you know I've seen you in the last few years, and it's it's just relentless. It's an amazing, yeah, it's, it's amazing funny, to watch. We spoke about this a, a few times. So I started 2010, and he okay. was already eight I'm years seven. in. Yeah. Yeah. So he was already eight years into doing it. Oh, wow. And in the Northwest, in Manchester and Chester and Preston and Liverpool, you're watching him, compared in, in particular, mm. it was Dan Nightingale and Friends, even on like a weekend bill full of headliners. Because <laughs> it's just, yeah. Do, do you know what I also made a point of? And I I think that's a great change in stand-up now is, is the tur- turning over your stuff as well. Like it's... It's one thing being a murderer and smashing, smashing mm. and having stuff that is like, yeah, this is smashed. And the crowd are like, whoa. And the staff are like, if I have to hear this one more <laughs> fucking time. Yes. You know, the other thing that in, when I watch a comic and I'm like, fucking, that's quality. The the other layer is, and I haven't heard oh, any yeah. of that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you're like, this is quality. I remember talking to Danny Mack about that. I was like, you're smashing it, smashing it. And, that's the main thing, isn't it? And turning over materials it's important. Line, isn't it? But he was K- like, "Killing is easy." Was his yeah. his little oh. catchphrase. K- once you learn how to kill, it's easy. It's easy to go on and just do what you did last time you made it because it'll work again. Of course it will. Yes. But if you you've got to find a way to make it a better and b harder for yourself and more reward and without it going tra- without it dying on the vine, because yeah. that's the other thing. A great set can go stale, can't it? I yeah. think, for me, I get bored of doing stuff. Where are you with that? Where's your... Do you need to turn it over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm doing... I've never seen you do the same set twice, ever. Uh, well, uh, I, I, no, I'm, I, I, I don't think I suffer from, you know, not writing or, or anything yeah. like that. But, I, you know, even coming out of lockdown, did Comedia. I, I did a few gigs before I did the weekend at Comedia with, with Stephen uh, Grant and, and Zoe Lyons. And, um, and, 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 you know, they were amazing. But I, I'd done a few gigs and I'd realised the stuff that I thought was, the stuff that was working on Zoom, uh, it you know I'd been warned in the f- in the first few gigs back that not all of that's going to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so when I went to comedia, I did t- two halves, ten of some of the stuff. You know, ten of new, brand new, yeah. and then ten of stuff that was said before. Yeah. And I just uh, I don't get a I don't get a bug. You know the rush. Yeah, you don't I get don't it from old get stuff. the ru- I just come off, and it doesn't even matter how that first ten went. I'm angry at myself that I was doing the. The, you know, the, the final 10 was already... Yeah, yeah. I was saying that before Did lockdown. you do loads just, of Zoom gigs? No, but I did. The indication from Zoom would have been that this is all... I, f- I felt like I was coming out of lockdown with... The, I, and I, did a, I did a two work in progress. Like, I did two hours. Yeah. And it seemed to all work. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I've basically written a new show. Yeah. <laughs> do, do the first gig back. I haven't written a new show. I very much haven't written a new show. What is that? What 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 was that with the Zoom stuff? Like I did, I I'm I'm doing the same thing now. I've got some new stuff that we tried last week at Hot Water, and tonight I've got twenties twenty five minutes in Leeds, and I'm pulling out stuff from before the lockdowns. Not even the best stuff, just the stuff that I'm not bored of. Yeah, uh, yes. like I, that have sort of stayed fresh in the notebook or whatever. Yes, and I've tried to do some Zoom gigs to sort of tune up, and it was. It's just the weirdest feeling going, fuck, that just sort of died on Zoom. 
And that definitely worked before. I've That's worked in front of a live audience. Why is it dying on Zoom? It's because... And then the new idea you had fucking 20 minutes ago was like, ha, 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 ha. You've it, got Beryl and fucking Steve on the couch pissing themselves. Because <laughs> it's just a totally, totally, totally different thing. And it's the reason I... So... Our listeners are bored of me saying this. I didn't do many. I did a couple of corporate ones, and that was it. I was like, the club gig ones, I'm just not doing them. Don't like the idea of it. I don't think it's the same thing as stand-up. It's not the same as being in front of... Yeah, you're right. It's just not the same. It's something different. Like, if it came around oh, at a different time when I was still doing live stand-up, I might have been more inclined to go, oh, this is a new thing. I'll give that a try. The same way I have with podcasting, because this isn't stand-up comedy. It's something else. But the fact it was pretending to be a replacement for stand-up is what made me not want to do it. And I think a lot of people have gone, oh, no, it's just doing stand-up, but to a computer, and this will all be exactly the same on stage. And it's not. And it's not necessarily that being on stage, you have to be better, or being on Zoom, you have to be better. It's just different, and there'll be stuff that works on Zoom that doesn't work live, and there'll be stuff that works live that doesn't work on Zoom, because it's it's badminton and tennis, to use my old analogy again. I watched, I watched Dane open a uh, the COVID arms, and Dane's a quality comic. The what? The COVID arms, the, the one that Kiri ran. The COVID arms. She yeah. ran. She made a fake online pub. Oh right. right. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. I thought this was a real pub. <laughs> the fuck. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah. Right. Yeah. And Next door to the AIDS restaurant. <laughs> yes. Okay. And he, and he, I love it how that's completely. Put, I love it how you've never heard of a COVID arms. Like what? Yeah. 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 No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, right, the yeah, okay, so th there was an online <laughs> yeah. gig at the COVID RIC. And he started doing club stuff, funny club stuff, and I was watching it, and at the time, I was sat in my little fucking spare room, <laughs> and you can see people in their front room, and that started at 7pm, and he's doing stuff that is weekend comedy club, little bit edgy, little bit of a something about vaginas, and, and you could see people going, oh... Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you're like, yeah, because they've just put the kids to bed and they're in their living room. Yeah. So of course there is a it's gotta be different. Because what we we always say this about corporates. I don't mind corporates if the company come to the comedy club as soon as it's an away day and you're at the Marriott or at the, God forbid, at their place of work. When oh punters God. come to a comedy club, they step onto our turf and it changes the atmosphere, like, oh we're we're in your house. Yeah. When you're doing your they, bits they in their living you. room, you haven't yeah. gone to see them. Yeah, it's that a, that Zoom thing place. is the problem with it is people are on a laptop in their fucking dining room going, "Wow, that's a bit much." Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, you get away with way not more. The same thing, and it was never going to be. And I'm I'm sort of, I, I, obviously having this has given me the sort of privilege to do it. But I'm so glad I stuck to me guns and went. I'm not doing them unless you're going to pay me rent for the month. Any difference coming out of it? You like? Are you uh, doing uh, Edinburgh again? What's what? Uh, what where uh, are you at? What about ah? Uh, uh, there's gigs doing lot. Oh, I, I know. I, I came out with uh, a, a mentality because of the 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 terrifying notion that you know the the financial thing that was put in front of us. I thought I'm gonna. I've taken my situation for granted, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work harder than I've ever worked, which I never really done before. So I'm doing more gigs than I ever have done, really. I've gigged pretty much every night since this is, yeah, since we've reopened. So I've I have come out with a a sort of new mentality, which yeah. is just keep. And where's your where's your living room gig? Where's your home home like? Because so, Adam's hot water, mine's yeah. sort of the frog. I was at the frog. I'd say top secret. I have yeah. like I don't know if you have this. It's such a privilege of like pop in rights. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like Louis C.K. just like yeah. walking in. I, I sort of get that at Top Secret because because I'm don't, I don't live in London. Yeah, so I'm not famous. There's a small profile there, I suppose. But Mark has always been so good to me. Whereas if I'm at another club in London, if I text him a few months in advance, he'll just put the weekend in and I'll get the fees and whatever. But if I'm walking past the club and I just go, "Can I just?" He'll go, "Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful." He's f and do you, I've never seen you there. I've never done it. Oh my god, you absolutely. Oh dear. Bore me. There's something to look forward to. Yeah? Yeah, you should do it. Yeah, top secret. Pot, I, lo I could just, like you said, rock up and uh, and try anything. And it's brilliant. Yeah, it's home. It's What's the story with top secret? It's only been around, what? It's not been around all that it's long. It's a it? decade. Right? Because yeah. they started in the Africa Centre. 
which was in okay. around, around the corner in Covent Garden. And when he was in the Africa Centre, he uh, he was told he had to book a certain amount of black comics. Oh! Do you remember this? Now that makes sense. <laughs> He, he what bumped. did you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was. That, and then when that the, was, the, was like, is that, this an urban night? <laughs> <laughs> an urban night. But when he when he moved, like there was there was uh, at one point there was a, a a bit of an argument between a lot of comics uh, who who were black and Mark because that he wasn't booking as many when he moved to the new venue, and they were like, we've helped you build the club. You've still oh. got to give us just as many gigs just because that restriction's been taken away. And he, he he's quite fair, Mark. He books everyone as long yeah. as you, as long as you murder the gig. He's as, as fair a, co- a comic booker as there is anywhere Absolutely. in the country. He's fucking brilliant. Um, but the, it starts What are you bit, smoking at? Just imagine if there was an Africa centre in, in, in Manchester and there was a gig there and they were like, you've got to book loads of black comedians to be like, there is like two up here. <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of them. <laughs> you can do it in London. But... Um, and then they moved to the club they're in now and he's just built it. Like he's just mental, isn't he? He does the bar, he does oh. the door, he compares. He hosts it. He, yeah. he, he does everything. And he, the, like the gig is just like you book it in and he's like I'll pay you whatever I can pay you the fee will be whatever I say it is do the fucking gig where do you want to go on where do you want to go on yeah. what's, the, what's the running order you booked this <laughs> that's very that's that's so much more New York yes it most, feels yeah look like in out of London it's very like the opener is this person yeah, yeah, yeah. the middle act is this person yeah. it's all booked seven months in advance our top it, secret you can also be through people like Sean and when there's a big American act in as well if you're closing you're meant to do 20 minutes sometimes he'll be like eight just do eight because uh, TJ Miller's coming down and he's gonna do something right. at the end yeah yeah and you can be closing that gig after like it could be Jack White all open Paul Chowdhury in the middle Sean pops in and does ten and then Johnny Club come at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, 20 minutes, and it's, yeah, it's, I love it. I had to follow Jeff Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he pretty cool. In, he, I got flashed on 10 minutes once because Jeff Ross had turned up. Wow. So I, I didn't get told before it went on, and I'm 10 minutes in, and I know I'm about 10 minutes in, and the light starts going, and I went, no, and carried on. <laughs> And then the light come again, and I'm on stage in the mic. I went, Mark, are you asking me to come off? I've done 10 minutes. And he went, yeah, someone's here. And I went, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever been bumped? You imagine, imagine, that was at the store. imagine if that was for just an act that you like, <laughs> Sean Percival's turned up. <laughs> <laughs> when it's Jeff Ross, you're like, all right, fair enough. Have you ever I, been, because at the comedy store in London, that, that would happen, wouldn't they? they? They bump the open spot. Yeah, they can do, yeah. If like... You know, McIntyre or Jack D or someone turn up, they bump. Yeah. It's a very un-British thing, but I think it's... If if you're in London, and I suppose maybe Manchester and Liverpool, you could have it happen. I think comics who are like, oh, but I was bought for this time. They should just be more like, I don't give a shit, mate. Like Jason Manford bought part of a comedy club in Chester. That's such a shame that it didn't last. Um, and yeah, they were like, great. Jason, will you come down and do a bit? It'd be great if you came down. The whole bill happened. It was J- Jason was famous. No one else was. Like uh, he was going on, and he wouldn't go in before anyone. He wouldn't bump anyone. The whole bill happened till eleven p.m., and then he went on, and he owned twenty percent of the fucking building, <laughs> but still didn't want to bump anyone wow. because he didn't want anyone going. Oh, Manford throwing his fucking weight around in it. Oh, brilliant. Oh my. So he did. It's the sound four, way to do it, though, isn't it? That's very nice. It is sound, but it was it was an inefficient way of doing it because it was eleven fifty and he was still on. And his brother Colin was like, "Fuck, say, what's going on?" <laughs> like, it's his club, mate. I'm not. I'm not going. Jason, could you get off? Oh, that's right. You own this fucker. But um, I don't think I've ever been. Bu- I've told the story on here before. Sarah Silverman did the boat, and she went on, uh, like maybe before the headliner or after the middle act and just did 10, 15 of new, and it wasn't great. Oh, I think she thought, oh, I could just do some new stuff, and it was the boat, and it was Saturday night, and it was all, everyone just trying to bang it out of the park, and she was virtually on a notebook. So oh. that was a, one of those weird things where the New York mentality of like, I'll go and do a spot, just meets the UK mentality of Saturday night is when you pay the mortgage. <laughs> you book it in nine months in advance, you turn up and you, oof. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
But if I owned a club, I'd definitely do it how Top Secret do it and be like, yeah, of course you're, you're being manoeuvred. Yes. I'm not Jeff Ross in. Yeah, yeah. Nate, uh, what did you oh, think if of... If you walk down the stairs at Top Secret, there's a photograph of every famous comic who's ever played there on so stage cool. in the background. It's fucking great. Yeah. Like, it, it's... That's the, the stuff you dream about when you start. Yeah. Or is being it or is that just me? Being on a wall. Being on the wall. Yeah. Being on the wall. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. I'm on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah. I asked to go on the wall at the, uh, in, in New Zealand and they were like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, That's ah, not the shit. same. No. Can I go on the wall? I know. It's There's so I'm so... on the wall and can I go I on the wall? I'm looking at the wall. What's the fuck at the classic in Auckland? Yeah. I'm drunk looking at this wall going, this is literally the biggest wall. It wasn't even like an exclusive, like, you know, the comedy store in Manchester, like, there's Robin Williams and yeah. Alexis Sale. You're like, well, I'm not getting on that fucking wall. <laughs> but then at the Auckland, it was like every comic that had ever bothered to just drop in and do five was on the wall. I was like, can I go on the fucking wall? No. <laughs> At yeah, Top Secret wall. as well, it's really funny because there's, a, there's about 30, 40 photos on the wall. And 25 to 35 of them are super famous. And there's five people who probably asked to go on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Noah, Amy Schumer, Chris Rock, this guy. <laughs> He's on the wall at Hot Water. Am, yeah, yeah, Carl's on the wall at Hot Water. That's pretty cool. Because he was the show manager, got his mate to use the camera to take a picture of him, <laughs> hung it on the wall and then left. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I'm genuinely a man about it. It's bloody Auckland all over again. I thought you were going to say a name and you, you bottled it, didn't you? Just well, we know, don't slag uh, comics Just off. him. No, I know, uh, no, I know. Not to their face. Yes. I've um, started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when it happened. I think it happened about two, maybe three months ago when the Patreon got so ha I was like, oh, I'm going to start being a dick to the people I don't like. <laughs> it's, made, it's made me enjoy doing this podcast way more. <laughs> <laughs> Name that, Bellen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you talking about Jeff Ross? Did you see him and Atel do the bumping mics thing on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, are you going to ask me what I thought? Because I don't, I don't remember it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, just, I don't remember much. Yeah, right. That's it. That's it, a good, a good full stuff. I don't remember much. It's a problem. You, I'm like that. A phenomenal. Weird, you'd, yeah. be, you'd be I'd, great at a government inquiry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I do not recall. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know what, uh, I don't, I don't I really have a memory. Nothing really there's sticks. A, there's a friend of mine who I went to school with who can't remember anything yeah. at all until it's triggered. So if he can't start any conversation about when we were in school, he can't go, oh, do you remember that time Mark pulled the teacher's pants down and pushed them over in the hallway. But if I go, do you remember the time Mark pulled, he'll go, pull the teacher's pants down and push them over in the hallway. If you trigger yeah. it, he's... It I'm pumps. similar to that. I think it's an efficiency thing, you know. I think it's just using your brain for what you needed to. So you, like, filter all this shit out. Yes. I also get it's a very generous that... way to think of it, though, isn't it? Yeah. Not really, no, because it's still there. You're just not using the fucking, the main... I also think I don't enjoy much... And enjoying things helps you remember, yeah. you know, you go, oh, I enjoyed that, I remember it. Right. But because I don't enjoy much, it means yeah. that I just don't Do remember because I wasn't really enjoying it. I was just there because I had to be. <laughs> <laughs> so the real test to, to find out if this is a good it's show a is ask me. It's a pleasure to have you in, in, in a month's time go, do you remember anything from the podcast? <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm sure I will. I often don't remember things from the podcast, but I do enjoy it. I do, we'll get to the end of it, and Carl will go, what were the clips you want for social media this week? And I'll be like, you're going to have to watch the whole thing again. five minutes after we've stopped. I can't get excited. I, I, th I, th I actually think, seriously, it's some sort of dopamine problem. I don't get excited, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have the emotion excitement. It does, I don't have it. I, I have happy that this is happening now. It's happening. I'm happy. Yeah. But I don't have happy it's going to happen. I can't, holidays, the whole thing is torture until you're at the holiday. It's that I've, I'm in the hotel room. I've put the case down. Okay, I can have fun. <laughs> Otherwise, I was just a horror. I was sat on a plane. Oh, that was, that's what an awful, awful. awful Have an experience. argument with Nicolas Cage. On have the an way. argument with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Airports, queuing, have to take off your belt. Have to eat in a restaurant you probably don't really want to. You're surrounded by loads of people you don't know, probably don't like. Princess then you're Diana. sat on a plane, <laughs> bump into Princess Diana. You're not sat in first class, which means, let's face it, you're basically uncomfortable. You're sat in a chair for 
Well, anything over an hour is bad. So, Everyone's so far, eggy. Everyone's eggy. Well, so far, this holiday has been horrific. <laughs> this has been absolutely horrific. <laughs> so why the hell would I look forward to this? <laughs> right? now. So, And then you get to the airport. Well, now I'm just in an airport in another country. The airport in my country I preferred because it was nearer to my house. Now I'm in another airport, which is in another country. This couldn't get any worse. And they smell weird. And I've got to find a taxi, right? <laughs> now I can't speak the language. This is awkward. I feel awkward about not learning the language. Now they're having to speak my language. I feel incompetent. I get in the car. I don't know how far away we are from the hotel. Is he going to screw me with the This is just horrendous. Like, make this stop. Get to the hotel. Queue? No, queue. Now we're in a queue. Oh God! When is this person going to hurry up? Had to talk to the person. Sorry, I can't speak your language again. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's just because my country only invaded a few of the countries. Why didn't they just do the whole planet? Would have been a lot easier. For now, no offense. Not like now, but if they had done it ages ago, then I would have to feel guilty about it, and you'd speak English, and it would be fine. Here's your key card. Okay, you have to get in a lift. I don't want to be in a lift. Who wants to be in a lift? That's not enjoyable either. Now I've got to my floor. Okay. Swipe card. <laughs> it's working. We're in. Let's enjoy ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that awful feeling like, oh, God, I'm going to do, do all that again in six days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just the, the whole of the holiday. I can't believe I've got that coming up. It's already Thursday. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But yeah, so I don't, I don't have excitement, which is uh, annoying. Wow. <laughs> there you go. That was. I love it. <laughs> I do. That yeah. Was, and and I enjoyed watching that unfold. <laughs> yeah, well, that's tr- yeah. Can't wait to make a sitcom with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Oh, fuck off. Shall we have a, a break and we'll hear from one of the cunts who gives us money? Yep. What's happening, guys? It's Adam here, and I'm here to tell you yet again that this podcast, Have A Word, is supported and brought to you by Manscaped, the world's best male grooming products, especially for that below-the-belt grooming. And they've got some big news. They've just released their cologne scent. Who knew smelling this good could feel this good as well? Join the movement apart and become a part of 2 million people who are now trusting Manscaped to shave their balls. Now, I shave me balls once a week, twice if I'm feeling frisky. Uh, and since I've started using Manscaped, I've stopped cutting the bag. I don't snag the bag anymore. Manscaped, I, I know they're a sponsor of this podcast, and I'm literally getting money to say that they're great, but I don't use anyone else anymore. They're absolutely brilliant. They've got the Perfect Package 3.0, where you get the ear trimmer called the Weed Whacker. You can use that on your nose as well. You get the Lawn Mower 3.0, which is the little wazza for your balls and that. There's Ball deodorant, there's ball toner, there's ball wipes. Basically, if you clean yourself up down there, lads, right, if you get a bit, a little bit neater, right, a little bit shaved down there and make it smell nice, your beard's going to want to suck it off more often. So why aren't you doing it? Trust me, go to manscaped.com right now and use the promo code WORD at checkout. That's W-O-R-D. You'll get 20% off and you'll get free worldwide shipping and they'll stay dead happy with us because we're sending them a few customers. They'll keep sponsoring the podcast and we can keep bringing you this top-level bullshit for free. Go do it now and then come back. But shave your balls and stop them stanking. Welcome back. Everybody. Part four. Question, question. Tom T says, if your team just magis- magically stopped existing and you wanted to pick a new team, who would you pick and why? So you're a QPR fan, aren't you? Yes. Why? Why? Because my dad moved over when we were like top of the league with Bowles and Marsh and Jerry Francis. So uh, Liverpool actually beat us to the... Beats to the league that year. Um, but uh, but that was our best team. So he moved over to Shepherd's Bush to support QPR. So then he started bringing me to the games in, in London. And so I, the reason I live in Shepherd's Bush is so I can walk to the games. Oh, really? I oh, can't imagine. Cool. That that question sickens me. I don't want to imagine. I, don't, I can't. I'm not, I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, d- I, wouldn't, I, I would honestly, never. See, I, 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 don't, know, so I, I don't, don't even like football. Right. I don't like football. I love QPR. I don't even understand why people watch other football matches. Like, I don't give a shit about any of these men, any of these places, these fans, nothing. I support my team. Yeah. I'm, Q- I'm QPR. I'm not football. 
and QPR, I'm not fucking. Yeah. God, I wish for you that QPR weren't as shit as they are. Because <laughs> you have you have the commitment of a Liverpool fan who's had a lot of payoff for that level of love. Yeah. I am QPR. <laughs> you cut me. I bleed blue and white. Yes. Whatever you want. Well, we got promotion <laughs> in 2011. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. I am so Could close. you answer that? I'm so close to that latitude in that I can't really fathom it. However, the answer, disgustingly, is Everton. If Liverpool stopped existing, I would support the other Liverpool team. I suppose. Oh, so. I, in, I am fascinated by that. I try to imagine where you, I thought you'd go. I just thought you'd do the toys out of the pram and go, no, Liverpool or nothing. But maybe I don't understand the Liverpool-Everton rivalry. Because Joe, when they were about to win the league last year, I'm an Everton fan, by the way, so I fucking hate them. Okay. Everyone, call, everyone makes it a Scouse thing. So I'm automatically like defending them in a weird way. Like, oh, them yeah, scouts like Man United and Chelsea fans uh, are like, I'm like those ah. fucking horrible scouts, bin dip and rat cunts. And he's in there. I'm a scouser, so he's like, in there. Attitude yeah. towards Liverpool. Do you That's hate a- Man United more than you hate Liverpool? Yeah. I went oh, oh yeah, you got actually. Sorry, gonna go back. I support whoever's playing United. <laughs> really. <laughs> Whoever's we playing United. We went to the pub to watch the final day and celebrated as if we'd won. That was wonderful. Lost. What if yeah. wasn't it? What if Fulham are playing United? Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. God, no, yeah. You know. I love the grounds in West London it's, that are absolutely jammed in. It's yeah. re- like Craven Cottage and Loftus Road are like, I've got to get a stadium in here. Yeah. <laughs> but the house prices, I know. <laughs> we need at least 16,000 people. But we could have eight houses. Never mind that. It's yeah. so funny. Do you know who Dan supports? I'm a I'm a Watford fan. What? <laughs> yeah. Foot? Hey, Jago. Could that go in one of the clips? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how you build a podcast. Um, <laughs> give him a joke. This is that question for me is is hard to answer, but because I see myself as a scout before I see myself as anything else, I my, the answer is Everton. As as annoying as a answer that I uh, that it's is It's a surprise. For, for you, because you don't like football, but you love QPR and you've lived near it your whole life so that you can go to the game. Yeah. It it becomes a, no, I'm not doing anything else. It's different for you, isn't it? Watford. Yeah, I, t- I, t- I picked Watford because I got into football late and I like being different. You picked them? Yeah, me and my mate Fraser, everyone was, a, everyone was like a, a United, a Liverpool, a Preston or a Blackburn fan, like early 90s. And we wanted to be little weirdos and be different. So we did a FA Cup draw of the teams we were going to support. I thought his dad was a Watford fan. And, he, and he, basically, he cheated Watford the way through. I think, officially, it should have been Plymouth Argyle that we picked. because we, But he was like, yeah, but my dad's from Watford, so he'll take us to games. And I was like, ah, all right. Everyone's going to think we're different. And then they, t- he, I think his dad took us from about the 92, 93 season over the next three or four seasons, took us about 20 games. And we were always in the away end. And we went to Vicarage Road maybe three or four times. But we went to four or five times as many away games and it just stuck it just it just really stuck and, I like that and and nice. and what's great is you meet other football fans it, no one's ever gone ah oh, of course you support Watford because like you know we won the 97-98 Division 2 Championship but like nothing else well can you answer the question I part of me would go well then I would have liked to support a team that won more because I've been with mates. I was at my mate's flat when you beat Tottenham in the Champions League. Yeah. And it was just insane watching. Because <sighs> I've obviously I follow the New Orleans Saints and have done for a while, but they've never been in a Super Bowl. Watching those lads watch the Champions League, I was like, I will never have this. Because I, like when we beat Wolves in the semi final of the FA Cup, I got really excited. But I didn't get as excited as my mate. Uh, Tony and my mate Rummy got watching Liverpool beat Tottenham. It's just a fucking bigger thing. It was, I don't know. And I, I was with you when I, you came with me, didn't you? To when Watford pub- played Man City in FA Cup. I was like, Tottenham. oh, we're doing hot <laughs> just, water and Watford. It was just sad. <laughs> <laughs> Watford are in the FA Cup final. It was just really sad for two and a half hours. <laughs> me, me, you and you, I, sh- I should have worn a Watford top. But I think a few people around us, like all Liverpool fans, worked out that I was like 
There was no Man City fans. I think a few people worked out that I was a Watford fan, and there was just a few looks of like, fucking hell, that's Because <laughs> <laughs> it was 6 nil, And then the oh. yeah, And it just oh. took pride of like, bloody hell, the Watford fans, they kept fucking waving them flags. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, maybe someone else a little bit easier to watch, maybe. But I like supporting a smaller team. It was... You can become a Liverpool fan if you want. Some games. I had a chance, didn't I? I went to I went to Liverpool a few times, like watch McManaman that team play in like ninety five, ninety six. Mm. It just didn't stick. It wasn't the same as supporting a almost like a joke team. Yeah. Imagine this QPR playoff final, right? Against Derby, nil nil, 90, 90th minute, injury time, winner, Zamora, one nil. We're off to the Premier League. I had to leave at half time. Oh, oh. Was that 2010, Why? 2011? When was that? Oh, God, I should know. In, and around, know. in yeah. and around there? Yeah. Where did Walking you have to go? Shrewsbury. <laughs> For a gig. <laughs> For a gig. For a gig. <laughs> it's so much did fun. Did you want a ticket? You were at the game. I was at Wembley. <laughs> and we have, we have literally referenced Shrewsbury as a boring place more than once. But just recently we were like, where's the worst place to do a stag do? Shrewsbury on a Tuesday. <laughs> And you had to leave I, the playoff final. I walked, oh, I was walking um, um, away from Wembley at half time. Just me, Wembley way, walking away, crying. That is so unbelievably <laughs> heartbreaking. But Zamora scores. You've, you've deprived. I'm nearly crying. Every time I tell this, I nearly start crying. You've deprived this, yourself of my, possibly the greatest moment of your life. Without a doubt. There is no question that would have been the greatest moment of my life. Oh my god! Yeah, unbelievable. With my brother, with my dad. Oh. No, me on a train to Shrewsbury. F- find out we score the winner. Can't celebrate. I'm on the silent coach. <laughs> <laughs> god, is that honestly? Can you, can you, you see can, why I don't get excited? Yeah, you can cry quietly though. That's the good thing. <laughs> Do you remember after 9-11, right? <laughs> oh, when, God, where, where is this going? Do you know when you seen that video of the man jumping and what it was is... just really sad? Yeah. That story has just made me sadder than the first time I've seen the fallen man from the Twin Towers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm too scared to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> so scared of Twitter and the... <laughs> I can't be seen to, <sighs> to react to that. That's the first time we've mentioned the name of that newspaper. Oh my god! On this podcast. Well, uh, if it helps, I'm not a fan. <laughs> this, this episode might go down as people's favourites for a lot of reasons, but <laughs> it, ju- it just scored another couple of points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm oh, sorry. I should should I have not said that that word? That's that's no, 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 it's, it, no They're just yeah. scumbags, aren't they? I'll bleep it. Yeah. No. Yes, that's a good idea. We have to bleep. Before, Do bleep we? it. We have do done it before. It. I don't want them. I don't want anything to do with them, so Fuck I'll believe it. Bleep it. Just, what, us calling them cunts? battle of you know shit who we're talking about? horrible, racist, misogynistic, sexist, gobshite cunts. And I hope they're all having horrible lives. Every journalist that's ever worked <laughs> there, stepped in there. I hope they come home and they find their entire family being bummed by apes. And, and the apes are really enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's really tricky to pick a question. After. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there uh-huh. Patron in there? What? Is there some Patron? <laughs> there isn't any alcohol. You two there. should host Good Morning Britain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would pan that, out. You have to change it to Good Afternoon Cunts. <laughs> <laughs> That wouldn't even last as long as Manford doing the one show. (laughs) (laughs) Right, Jason. (laughs) (laughs) I had to wait for 50 minutes while you headline that game. I'm on the mess. You had to wait while he headlined the laughing. I I actually wanted to wait. It was it was great. It was really good fun. I was gonna say, if you're doing that, you've got to offer to wrap the show up, haven't you? One of my (laughs) one of my favourite things. Yeah, he he would have done it, but I I was totally. Like one of my favourite things is watching brilliant bigger acts in clubs. I think it's fucking great fun. Yeah, yeah. B- uh, being in a, th- we've talked about watching Kevin Hart in an arena. What a disaster! 
and being in those big thousand seaters is fine. Watching a comic that is regularly on TV, like you're not like I, I'm sure you do bigger venues, and I've I've supported you doing a massive venue. I'd much rather watch you at, at Top Secret or you at Hot Water. It's fucking electric. Watching Manford Absolutely. in front of yeah. 190 people I on just, a Saturday night in Chester was banging. I just love comedy clubs. I, more than anything else in the world. Like, whenever I've spoke to tour and stuff, they're like, right, so in Birmingham, we're going to do the Arts Centre. Like, no, we're not. Let's do the Glee Club because it's a comedy club and people are going for comedy, not for art. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want people, everyone who's been in that room ever before to have gone, we're here for comedy, not the place where they saw Jack and the Beanstalk last year or a one-woman <laughs> yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. About it. like I just don't want any of that. I want them to go. Or one meant- man play. <laughs> yeah. Or, or one them play. I'm, re- I'm really good. I'm really good. Cover good all that Adam them. didn't do the end of that. A, a one woman play about. And I, my ears went. I say what? <laughs> oh, here's another thing not going to be clipped. I say what? <laughs> um, <sighs> Jesus. Right. Oh. Indie clone sent in a question. He says, "Hi, Lids. If you could run a pub anywhere in the world." Oh. Where would it be, and what would you call it? Mine would be the Pug and Pauper, and I'd have it in Sheffield. That's from Indie Clone. I'd, oh, uh, by I'd the way, ru- I won't run. By the way, before we talk about the pub, Indie Clone sent us a. You can send anything, uh, um, but Indie Clone sent us a little package. Don't know what it is yet. I've not opened it. Don't know what it is yet, but we'll open it if you do week. want to send something, and by the way, uh, the the PO box is Have a Weird Studio, Run Corn, the Heath Business Park, WA Seven Four QX. Just put that on the screen so we get sent some more stuff. I like it when we get sent stuff. But if it's a kilogram of cocaine, probably <laughs> don't use Royal Mail. <laughs> <laughs> I I re- like we haven't opened this. We're going to open it on Patreon next week, aren't we? I really hope that it's actually cocaine. Well, I'm going to say this. I think I hope. More than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you don't do drugs, and I love a bit of beak. <laughs> oh, that'll be a fun fortnight of not oh. sleeping. Like, guys, where are you going? Let's do more podcasts. <sighs> Woo! Oh, I really hope it's cocaine. I just really hope that someone has sent us this much cocaine in the post. Like a postman had this in his bag. <laughs> How much would that be? How much would this be? Streetwear. You're looking, as they say, street bare family. minimum, 80, 90 quid. <laughs> yeah. You really know drugs, don't you? <laughs> Lots of London you, places. Don't I said bare minimum. Bare minimum. Are you saying it's less? Because yeah. if it's not less, then I'm right. Well, what's street <laughs> street value? It's 50,000. 50,000, isn't it? <laughs> 50, 50 quid a gram, 1,000 grams. Am I right? That's pretty simple. A kilogram. Mm. Is it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Do you reckon? Yeah. Or 50, 50, 50 gram. gram? Street value. Well, it depends how good it is. Let's but you get, you get Let's a find cheap... out. Let's find out the quality. <laughs> Are we going to sell that? That's street value though, isn't it? So you do get it cheaper buying it in bulk. Thanks for that, Costco. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is, and it's like buying bottles of water from Costco. Yeah, but when they say street value, that they don't mean like, if you've got like a Groupon voucher. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just do what it's worth per gram. They're not yeah. like street value, unless you know the bloke and he gives you a few quid off. <laughs> no, but if that if you cut this up into a thousand bags, you get fifty quid a bag. But you don't get fifty grand for this, do you? This is more like twenty five, thirty, surely. Mm. You've, it's, uh, yeah, you're spot on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Because you're saving right. the admin. You're saving the effort of cutting it up. He is right. You, isn't you, he? You're saving on the man hours. Yeah. Well, no, but Why are you explaining the most simple thing about <laughs> drugs ever? Like, no, but it's more individually sold individually. Am I right? I am right. And just to check, it's illegal. It's not allowed in this country by law. And people inhale it, not through the mouth or bum hole. Is that right? No. You can. And it makes you feel good. <laughs> you would get high if you rubbed this on your bum hole. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? If, if you it, fingered yourself with this on your finger, you'd get a you'd get a bit of a buzz. Listen, Sean didn't do one didn't want to do nine eleven. He's not gonna want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're, we're just gonna have a, a quick break and everyone's gonna come back, <laughs> come back stood up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, fi- that fifth section was good. <laughs> Take me to higher. 
Oh God! See, actually, the human race, actually, the human race itself is like a cancer. It's like a disease that's trying to kill the earth. That's what I've always been trying to say. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's oh, good to be oh, here. I just want right. to say I love you guys. I've always wanted to wear a cap backwards. Think I might do that now. Oh God! Good here, isn't it? I love it here. Run corn, freaking brilliant. Oh, no, it's good. It's a good place. Uh, have a mm. word. I have. I've had plenty. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. But I'm only saying one. Pasty, pasty, salt and pepper, chicken, come ask, come, suck my dick, suck my dick, tits, pasties, chips. But I uh, know. No, it's good. It's good. Love the Matrix. Looking forward to the Matrix Four. I love it when they release sequels, right? But what they do is they get the name of the film, like Batman, and then they just they put a the on, so it's like the Batman. Or with Wolverine, it's like the Wolverine. But then when they make a single, they take off the the, so it's just Wolverine. They do that with Matrix Four. Did you know that they call it the Matrix? With Matrix One is called the Matrix, but Matrix Four they're just calling it Matrix. But it's all good. I love films. I really love films. It's good to be here. How are you? It's nice to have Dane back on so soon. Isn't it? <laughs> oh God! I've had too much coffee. I forgot I had a coffee. My li- limit is two a day, and I forgot I had one on the train. On Genuinely, the way here. where's my coke? So I. Uh, but doesn't I that feel, mean that you've now reached your limit? You haven't gone past it. No, I've got past on the it, shelf. Because I had one this morning, one on the train and that. So I want it on display. Oh, Don't miss no. next week's Patreon, by the way, because we're opening it and seeing what it is. <laughs> I think next week you should open it and without checking anything, just have a line of it, whatever it is. Okay. On the episode. Right. Because mm-hmm. you're I not going to get done. You know, when I'm it's dead. not illegal to, to see if something's cocaine. It's only illegal Sorry. to do cocaine. Uh, if you accidentally it's, I, don't, that's not, I don't think it's illegal to do cocaine, honestly. No, it's not. It's definitely illegal to have possession of a kilogram of it. So it's You don't not. go to prison for sniffing cocaine. So hang on, you're telling what? me. It's possession and... Pos- uh, and um, so if you get intent, caught with a kilogram of no, cocaine... That's intent to, you're not no, doing no, no, that no, yourself, no, are no. you? Let me ask the question. Okay, So it's <laughs> illegal to possess it, but not to do it. So if the police turned up here now... As long as you snort all of that before they get the handcuffs on you, <laughs> you just fine. Well, well, you're not going to go to prison. <laughs> but I you- found a loophole! <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the toilet! No! Put it in Adam! <laughs> God, he's done the whole kilogram <laughs> with his asthma. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um... Jesus Christ, oh this has been such a fun one. When you laugh enough on this podcast, I get a weird, like, like headache. I've got the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've got so it. So if you could run a pub anywhere oh. in the world, where would it be? You know, because that was hilarious, but no way did we answer the question. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'd call it Rowie's Boozer and put it in the middle of Times Square. Right in the middle. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Tell me they, that you wouldn't. Look. That would be a really easy to run pub. You've got constant pass and trade. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to rent though. He's so oh. confident in he? He's like, no, I'm not going to take a premises that exists. I'm going to build a purpose built building in the middle of Times Square. Rowie's bar. Where are the bins going out? What? There's no, where's the back of it? The middle of Times Square. Uh, Underground. Just put straight into the sewer. Right. Like there's just a hatch. Good, is it? To be fair, when he answers and you're like, all right, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good, that's a business yeah. minded, aren't you? It's so good. Like, I would've, I would've not have very thought. environmentally minded. No. In the fucking sewer. Yeah, but I'd just hire an environmentalist to deal with that stuff. I've just got to run the pub, haven't I? You yeah. tell me that wouldn't be a successful pub. Rowie's bar. Yeah. Rowie's that's boozer. Rowie's yeah. boozer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want the old. I want an old style pub where you can't see in. You know, like the windows. It's like yeah, they have windows, but it's curtains and it's like frosted glass. Is it frosted glass? Frosted, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's sort of like the glass where it's like circles, <laughs> so you can't quite see through it. Yeah, it where, literally. What you're describing looks like one of the shops on Diagon Alley and Harry Potter. Like, oh yeah, yes, it, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Where would you put it though? I, uh, Remember, you can't have the middle of Times Square. Can't have you've got the middle of Times Square, just uh, what? Well, well, just just near my house. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> hey, he moved I somewhere to be close to QPR. It definitely wasn't going to be Norwich. For the it's a fantasy if you can run a pub anywhere in the world. Sean's like immediately thinking moving vans. <laughs> oh, just, <laughs> yeah. fill that. just near, yeah, no, West London somewhere. Uh, and then one of the old names, you know, like the the the, the duck, the red lion, the red, the, the yeah. Giraffe. Oh, I think I'd duck. 
Doch. Like the a duck. duck. Just the, the dog. The dog and duck. The duck. Dog and duck. Dog and duck. The dog and duck. <laughs> duck. <laughs> you duck. can't just call it the duck. Can you? The duck. You yeah, can. Yeah, I suppose you could. You can. Going down a fucking duck for a fucking few boozers. Yep. Got the accent Brilliant. there, haven't you? Yeah. That's what's All right. Doing. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> what are we drinking? What? In the boozer. Beer. Oh, in that accent, yeah. Yeah. I'll have a fucking beer. <laughs> I used to have a, a pub that I worked at that I spent a lot of my sort of late teens and early 20s at. It was called the Round Hill. It was a wonderful place, very sort of, uh, not influential in my life, but that was like a key part of my life. And uh, so I might call it the Round Hill after that. That yeah. shut, that, that closed on New Year's Eve and the last song we played was the Cheers theme and we all cried. Oh, it's great being young, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Imagine yeah. Imagine closing at 37, like, oh, I've got to find another fucking job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old yeah. were you when you started to stand up? Were you... 21? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Similar to you though, isn't it? You're 22? Yeah, I was about 20, 21, yeah. yeah. There you I, go. I worked at a pub called Hartley's in Preston that was just the same. When all my dickhead mates were getting jobs in Next and McDonald's, I was like, no thanks. I'm going to steal money from a pub in Preston <laughs> where girls turn up and it's loads of fun and we have lock-ins and get given free beer. <sighs> oh, great. What was your shift like at Next? Fucking dreadful. I got 20% I got off a tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hammered. What all? Fucking br- Hartley's. Just you saying the round hill mm. just reminded me of Hartley's. Mm. It was just that formative time where now, I'd, if I had to do that job now, I would hate probably every minute of it. But at 18, I was like, oh my God, it was so good. And I stole like a little bastard from it as well. What if the managers or the landlord is watching? Won't you be... See, Sean, you think far too far ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What me and Dan tend to do is just say stuff and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. Right, I, I just waited till they'd got the right, they'd given me the right money. Like two pints of Carlin was whatever, like for, say it was £4.80. Ah. And I just, oh, you've got £4.80. And then I'd, on purpose, get distracted by the next person. And I'd carry that I'd carry that money for the next two orders. Like, and just, because it was always, but you, you can ah. never nick on a Sunday afternoon. You can never nick on a Tuesday night. But Friday and Saturday night, so if ever, and it never happened, but if ever the manager went, why have you got money in your hand? I'll be like, I'm so sorry. It's so busy. I got distracted. I've just got to literally put this in the till. Me yeah. and Adam never did any of that. No, no you didn't do any of that at Zellig's no. or no. Envy. Never. No, of course no, you did. No. No. I mean, I don't know why someone just didn't flick a pocket as I jingled my way out <laughs> with £37 in my pocket. Fucking bowling. Rocky it down. was, because that was why I was getting paid for the shift. Just I put it in your tip jar. It. What? Just put it in your tip jar and say it's tips. It was a shared tips, wasn't it? Joint tips. Uh, Bullshit. Yeah. Bollocks. Oh, I got a good £1.80 from that. Bollocks. Jingle, jingle. And I got laid. Sex. That there. Just, in the pub? Yeah. In the pub. Yeah. You did shagging in the pub? I did a bit of shagging in the pub. Oh, was this the threesome? You had sex in the pub? Yes, I did the threesome in the pub. Yeah, on the bar? Three some with the manager. And, on, and yeah, on the bar, the just next to the Carlin tap. Yeah. No, not on the bar. On the fruit machine. No, now I'm thinking about it. On a carpet. Oof. Three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a carpet. <laughs> just on the floor. We didn't roll out a carpet. <laughs> it wasn't like threesomes going on so much that we were like break dancers <laughs> that brought our own lino. Oh shit, is there a threesome about to break out? Get the boom box and roll out that old carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the carpet of the pub. We didn't have a fucking rug. Did you just lay on the floor and had sex? That's mad. <laughs> <laughs> you never, never had sex seen on the floor? A yeah, yeah. Like in my house. But I've never lay on the floor of a pub. <laughs> I don't think I lay on the floor. The three of us like lying. Well, you've had a threesome in your house. No, but I'm- <laughs> <laughs> this section's gone to shit. I don't <laughs> No, you Carl had had sex in your Carl house. Had Carl had sex, sex on, on the, the floor, floor in, in his house, house, but never but in a pub. Right. I, I think it's very, what? very, very important at this stage, just for your clarity, to understand that at this point, the pub was shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that what you missed? <laughs> Not where? Where well, in the pub? What's the problem? Your problem is that the floor is dirty. It's, I don't know. I don't know. In what area of the pub? In the back? There's two bars. There's like the front main bar and around the back there was like a cocktail bar and I seem to remember it was... This is like 2.30 in the morning on some random Wednesday night we've been to Tokyo. Wait, shows. you had a 
free someone on Wednesday. <laughs> Oh my god! I love it that that's the point where you were like, ah, oh, I mean, fuck anyone on a Friday or Saturday. Absolutely, but Wednesday threesomes with Nightingale. What? What a life you've led! I get pretty revved up by Coca-Cola cup fixtures. I let... <laughs> yeah. Woo! Uh, god Almighty! Do you not get carpet bands? No. 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 I just want to know. It's just a weird. Just the act of lying on the floor. The I, did, I didn't lie down. The woman was lying on the floor. <laughs> you know, how do you know? Two men, two, another guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eiffel Tower. My manager. My manager at the time. <laughs> He's the Eiffel Tower. And his girlfriend. What? Yeah. On a Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> my Lord. Oh my God. I we, can't believe we, we did this story on a Patreon maybe like <laughs> nine months ago. It was a clip. It went out as a clip. It went out as a clip. Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. very popular clip as well. And it, I just, I feel like it, we're treading on like something we've talked about before, but there was a, there was a point that There's I. There's a lot more detail this time though. You oh, didn't really? tell us the carpet on the Wednesday last time. <laughs> no, because a lot you of it was, it was in a bed on a Sunday. No, you were, spent most of it going incredulous like, you! And a threesome, <laughs> you. Yeah, and uh, at one point, we. This is. I can't believe this is a public episode. <gasps> at one point, he was on all fours, he and I, I. No, he, she was. Oh right, again, you guys. Said he then. Okay. Right, it's and he like was. Yeah. He he was getting a blow job from his missus, and I was. Yeah. I was behind, and and I was just giving it as death. I was giving it as best I could, and I very clearly remember <laughs> him going. <laughs> Like, give me a little nod. Yeah. Like, doing a cracking job there, kid. Did you know high five? <laughs> no, we didn't touch each other. That's the Eiffel Tower, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but we didn't do it. He just gave me a little nod, like, yeah, you're doing a cracking job. I was like, I am banging your missus here, mate. <laughs> they split up about four weeks later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it weird that one of my- Do you think that I... was related? Do you think it was- Did you I switch th ends? I think it, what, at like half time? <laughs> Did <Yeah>. you? <laughs> Carl, like, when's a July down on the carpet, lad? <laughs> Was the Febreze or what? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Did you get any shake and vac down, you dirty old bastard? <laughs> <laughs> so my pub would be called the Heartless. <laughs> Put a bow on that one. <laughs> Feels a lot easier doing those sort of stories on a Patreon episode, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. As as I've said before, when he's giving me that face, I feel very nervous. <laughs> Well, it's one of the I, rare times when Adam's going, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Wait, sure? This is going out. I can't believe. How do, I mean, we, we, I'm sure we will move on and we'll, we'll have to, but, no. but... No, you don't have to. How does that begin? At what point does it... I when know, did I it know, cross the, the line? That question. So they'd been sort of drinking the three of them all night yeah. and then at one point they jokingly went, oh, we're going to go back and have a threesome. And he was like, of course we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. And then they did. Oh, so... They started the walk back from Tokyo Joe's to Hartley's is Fishergate, which is like the main street in Preston. And I remember the first like we should have a menage a trois. And I was eighteen. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. that's sexy. Man. Everyone <laughs> just laughed along. And literally, we were back. The manager got a pint out, and then um, the girl was in her knickers. And I was like, oh, this wasn't a joke. I didn't do any, like, I just did that. I don't know if this happened to you in your life when you're like, this is just happening. I'm going to try not to ruin it and I'll see what happens. <laughs> when you said I, I didn't do any, yeah. I thought you were about to say lunges. I thought you were about, I didn't do any lunges. I didn't have time to, to, to stretch warm and warm up. up. Yeah. yeah. No, there was no pregame. Straight in. Yeah. Yeah. It was good fun. That was, that was uh, 1999. I was seven. You famous were, one. Famous one. One. Right. It feels weird talking about a one-year-old <laughs> in a threesome conversation. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Adam was seven. And he didn't have a threesome for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Cardinal Heenan for you. So. <laughs> There's a boys' school as well. <laughs> um, have you got oh. any have a words? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> oh, my God. Woo! Oh. Right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's do this one. I feel like this is quite up Sean Street. Oh, no. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Lee says, all right, Lids, only been listening to the pod for a few months now, but I'm a massive fan of both of you guys. Stand up. I'm currently on episode 50 on Apple, Apple Podcasts. Come on, fucking Lee. Come on. So I'm currently smashing through an episode or two a day. I don't know how anyone does that. At this rate, I should catch up by mid-July. Uh, around this time, I should be looking into starting my dissertation and all of that boring uni shit, but I'd like you boys to have a word with me, uh, uh, my future self, actually. I have an annoying habit of procrastinating and spending my most productive hours playing Xbox uh, when I could have been doing something more important. Uh, I know, I just miss I hate Xbox. I hate when I miss that. It's so much pressure reading fucking badly spelled emails. Xbox, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> What's an Xbox? Ah. What's that? I've never heard of an Xbox. You mean Xbox? Yes, I, I do. Okay. Yeah, just Xbox. Lying down. On the carpet. <laughs> fucking weird. I mean, I've done it on me. I've done it in my house. I've laid on my own carpet. <laughs> when I could have been doing something important. Oftentimes, oh. I leave my deadlines until the last minute and I always hate myself afterwards as I know it's entirely my own fault. Motivate me and tell me to get a grip will be a nice surprise as no doubt I will forget I've sent this email. Uh, nice one, boys. Keep up the good work. Much love from Scotland, Lee. So Lee has been procrastinating. And he knows he's going to do it with this dissertation and he wants us to have a word. What do you, what do you think there, Sean? Well... Well, it's quite a lot. It's quite loaded, isn't it? That yeah. that question. He uh, leaves everything to last minute, yeah. and he wants us to sort of tell him that he shouldn't do that. Do you often get things done well ahead of time? Look, well, first of all, he said that he's gonna. Was he gonna hate himself? Yeah, but he's gonna hate himself whatever he does. <laughs> I love it how that's the bit you've picked out. <laughs> but you do, don't you? You just every. You just look back at your former self and go, "Oh God, <laughs> what was I doing?" So. You're, that's inevitable. You can't escape that. No, but yeah, but after enough time, but not like you don't get to July and look back at May and go, oh, I was such a cunt two months ago. <laughs> yeah, there's normally years in that. I know, I know. I, I, I operate on about six months. <laughs> Every six months ago, I was such a cunt. Or oh, 12 God. hours, often 12 hours ago, I was a gobshite. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You uh, don't usually regret the season before the one you're in, like, oh, uh, yeah. I was such a dick in spring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, well, I think the, the trick is to try and come up with something more important if you can, more important and and uh, and more, what's the word that you know, it, needs, it needs to be done immediately, more pressing, yeah. if you will, yeah. than your dissertation. See if you can find that, and if you can find what that is, you will procrastinate that. Oh. By doing your dissertation, do, yeah, that's what I do. So, so in life, right? What all you have to do to get anything done is have something more important that you should be doing. Yeah. Wow. Trick yourself yeah. into doing... Because you always put the most important thing off because it seems bigger, yeah. doesn't it? It seems harder to do. Even if it's not, just because it's more important, it seems more effort and harder. Yeah. So you go, ah, oh, I don't really want to do that, so I'll do the other yeah. thing. So you write a list, write dissertation, and you put cure cancer above it, and then you write, right. ah, oh, cancer's I have work. a theory that Rome... Rome was just avoiding doing something more important. The whole of the Roman Empire. Yeah, the like the Rome wasn't built in a day. It was like you've got to do. Oh, uh, what, what's an Italian name? Uh, Caesar, Federico. Caesar, whatever. <laughs> Salad. Salad. You, uh, you remember you got to do. Oh yeah, I just did that. Rome, Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nailed it. You got to do uh, that admin. Yeah. I'm just going to build Rome instead. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You think you think Rome was built because Julius Caesar so, didn't want to reply. Didn't want to do something else. <laughs> That's a, the only reason my flat gets cleaned is because there's something else I've got to be doing. <laughs> and yeah. I apply that to everything in life. So Rome was just a way of going, we could do that or we bet you know what? I better just build that arena. What was more important than building Rome? <laughs> yeah. Well, not more. All right, not more important, but but what needed to? There might have been something that needed to be done. Whereas building so, Rome didn't need to be done. Didn't, of course, it didn't need to be done. <laughs> no, but it, it didn't, did it? it they, life was operating before Rome. 
didn't need it. But there might have been something that was more pressing. Going, oh, I don't know what that thing would have been. I'm, I'm hoping you would. Have, can I you know, help, uh, um, Sean? I love how grand you've gone with the example of building <laughs> Rome. <laughs> I love this. Every one of us is thinking, what's bigger than building Rome? Like two thousand years ago. It doesn't have to be bigger, but it could just be something you don't want to do. Running an international drug ring. Tax return. Tax return. Build Rome. Build Rome. <laughs> yeah, to be you've fun. got to do your tax return, or oh, yeah. we could make some roads. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably lucky that Julius Caesar wasn't like me because he would have just had a big wank. Because usually, like, <laughs> yes, there you oh, go. Tax deadline. I'm like, oh, yeah. So what can, he do? No what can he do then? That's bigger than a dissertation. Get a new uh, girlfriend. Get a new girlfriend. What? Get a new girlfriend. Get a girlfriend pregnant. Oh, and, one he doesn't like. And promise to, you know, help raise a child. And then just don't do that. Do your dissertation. Yeah. Book it if he doesn't drive. Book it. It's not more important necessarily, but if it's like you book your driving test and you've got your driving test coming up and you've got to learn how to drive, and it's now it's coming closer and you're thinking, "Fuck, I've really got to do that that driving test." <laughs> then, then you'll do your dissertation. See, it's maybe yeah. It's maybe. true. I'm I'm, I'm I'm terrible for the last minute stuff. I try not to be, but like last week when it was new material, it was Monday afternoon and I was like, I haven't got it all. Yeah, I is. was meant to pre-book the train tickets to come here and I didn't, and this cost me 94 quid. Yeah. Well, That's I mean, tw I 25 quid of that was choice, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 25, uh, 25 quid on top of that. Oh, my God. Wow. Nothing makes me work more than deadlines. I'm Nothing. broke. I can't work without a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> but you still spend the 25 quid. I'm broke, <laughs> but I'm not sitting with them cuts. <laughs> I want, I want to be in Nicolas Cage's seat of nothing. I'm, I'm Nicolas just, Cage. I'm, I'm more important than Nicolas Cage. Just, it's the same thing though, isn't it? Because your priority there should be to look after your bank account. Yeah. And instead you've gone, no, comfort. It's the exact yeah. same thing. It's the anxiety, yeah. You're putting the anxiety off to the last minute, aren't you? Yeah. I could buy this train ticket now, which is horrendous. <laughs> or I could just leave that buy until the train I. Ticket. It is there's, though. There's Horrendous. nothing else I could do, but I have to buy the train ticket. You no, know, and all you do by buying the train ticket, like even if you get it the same price last minute as you did early on, all you're doing by booking it early is just taking away that annoying thing to do. You're not. Nothing really changes. You still get to the fucking place. If you're an organised person, you go. Oh, I bought that train ticket. Pretty much all you've done is avoid. Three weeks ago, and, oh, I'll book the train ticket, you lazy shit. Oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. But it never works like that, does it? And then even it's... though, the, like, I'll be really organised one time, and then two times later, I'll be like, oh, I didn't do it. Even though it was e it's so much easier being Whenever organized. you do something, and you get something like admin done in life, and you go, that is how I'm living now. <laughs> That is, I'm going to be like that for the red. This is it. I found it. Why wasn't I living like this? I've solved it. And yeah, and it just like, crumbled. Like that time you did the home your homework on, on Friday evening. The, I maybe did it once in my whole school career. You got home and went, I'm just going to get it done. And yeah. then by Friday, 7.30, you were like, la, la, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck you, the weekend's mine. You're do like you're 12, the, worst, but it's the one I'm worse for with amazing. this is putting a wash on. Because oh. it's a machine that yeah. does it for you. And all I have to do uh, is go, in you go, and press one button. And I will sit there and uh, stare at an empty washing machine. It's just mad. For five hours being like, I could have got five washes done in this time yeah. easily. And I'm just still sitting. I'm literally looking at it and I'm thinking about putting clothes in it. I know. But not putting clothes in it. Taking the bins out. Yeah. I mean, that's the classic. Yeah. When you come back in... From taking a bin out, yeah, you feel like you've cleaned London. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming back in, like fucking Look at that <laughs> empty recycling boxes. Yeah, oh. he's never felt that feeling. Like doing the dishes straight after you've cooked dinner. Oh, like dinner done. Oh. You've ate and you go. Do you know what? I'll just get these done. Done. Or without having to ring a Romanian to come and pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Goran, we've got another load for you. Oh, I'm them. quite bad for uh, letting my dishes become so dirty that I throw them away and buy new dishes. What? Yep. <laughs> he also fills his garage up as a bin and then gets someone to remove the garage. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. Live like how I used to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Christmas. Like I just cleared my house out and there was it got to the end of it and my bin was full and I was just putting stuff in the garage and it was so messy I just rang a Romanian man and he did it for me. I once, <laughs> right? I I Oh eight hundred Romanian man. Do you, <laughs> do you remember this, right? I was so I was I was I, I, I sometimes I can't sleep because I'm so hungry. You have yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're so tired, but you can't sleep because you're so hungry. So I'm lying in bed and I'm like, I'm exhausted, but I can't sleep because I'm starving. So I'm just going to have to get the energy to get up and, and, and eat so I can get to sleep. So I get up and all that I've got is um, a sort of those Sainsbury's takeaway uh, Indian platters, just some samosas and bhajis. So I put them in the oven and I go back to, to bed and I wait. Uh, and I'm just exhausted. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know if I can get up to get... The, the bargies and, and and then it's like you know 12 minutes whatever it is so I'm like right okay, I'll get up and get the bargies so I get up and I get the bargies and the samosas and I put them on the plate <laughs> and I and I eat them in bed and uh, I had a cat at the time right this, it was a, it was a, I think it was a kitten at the time so so I'm eating these bargies in bed and uh, and the samosas but strangely I then I then f- fill up quite quickly like I've suddenly become very, like, really, normally I can get through a lot, but I eat, like, two bargies, and I'm stuffed just off two bargies. So I'm like, I can't, I can't eat anymore. And I'm exhausted, so I'm going to put the bargies down. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, the, the cat. I can't put the cat down. Like, I can't put the food down because I've got the cat. Cat will eat it, yeah. But I'm so tired, I, I, I can't get up and put this in the bin. So... <laughs> I just stuffed the food <laughs> in my mouth and and I realised <laughs> that I was a bin. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, what I was doing was not eating. I was chucking the food away, but in me. <laughs> just going, I'm just not enjoying any of this, but I just can't get up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> I have had the thought, I'm a bin. <laughs> oh, I've got such a bad laughter headache. Oh, Sean Walsh, please come and do this more often. <laughs> so fucking fun. Oh. Oh, God, I've had t- too much coffee, and this has been fun. Some Coke. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Where can we where can we find you and your podcast with Paul? Paul? The podcast with Paul, I'm really, I'm enjoying that. I, d- I don't get excited about it, but I am enjoying it. We do, it's only 15 minutes long. So perfect for just popping to the shop or a post- Coital hug. Yeah. 15 minutes. I'm waiting for an Indian platter to, to cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you like it, well done. Uh, it's just 15 minutes. It's me and Paul, and we we moan for exactly 15 minutes. The last order's bell rings. It doesn't matter what we're saying. It ends. It's just 15 minutes. People tend to binge them, which is great, and we're now doing it with guests. So pl- please, the two of you, maybe we'll do a, um, have a word special and the two of you That'd come on. Amazing. Sounds good. As a, as a team, and we'll do uh, me, Paul, and you what's, two. And what's it called, John? <laughs> Fuck, sorry. <laughs> I'm not it's, it's called What's Upset You Now. Okay. What's Upset You Now with me and Paul McCaffrey. And, uh, okay. And your social handles, subscribe. at Sean Walsh. At Sean, S-E-A-N-N, Walsh. And I'm, on a, um, I'm not on, actually, I'm just on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. That's a vile place. And, uh, and, and, and Google Sean Walsh tickets. And, and, and enjoy the sitcom that you're going to produce for me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Starring Alfie Brown. (laughs) 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 That has been a pleasure. Cheers, mate. Thank you for having me. Patreon.com slash have a word pod. If you're not already getting these early access, uh, these public episodes early access, and an extra episode every single week. And as I'm sure a lot of you are aware by now, we've got some very, very, very special extra content coming up. We are going ghost hunting with Barry Dodds, which we're going to film the entire thing. You're going to see this... Every single one of us shit ourselves, especially Dan and Carl. And next month, we're doing a lockdown lock-in with Stephen Tries, one of our most popular guests. He's going to be on the couch getting drunk with us. Uh, there's plenty of extra content coming to Patreon on top of the extra episodes you yeah. already get every week Sign and up. these early access episodes. Patreon.com slash have at weird pod. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs>